Kim needs, uh, we need to authorize her to uh, sign a contract, which is the, uh, to continue digitizing the records. And um, she was successful in getting a, uh, we got the, got the big grant, got the $30,000. So that's gonna take us back about as far back as anybody's going, doesn't it, Ron? Uh, well, it's going to get back to 1980, almost. I mean, we're yeah. trying to get to 1980 for a 40-year search, so this gets us to this gets us eighty-five. To, yeah, it gets us to 85. In five short right. years, you'll be at 40, because we're moving forward just fine. We're going right. back. Right, it was, right, that's right. So we're we'll not doing anything more after the grant. We'll be at 40 years, which is the standard for new mortgages in 2025. Of course, Kim tries to make a little bit of so probably less than five years will be at forty. Right, right. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there, but it's, it's good shape. Yeah, yeah. no, no. This was. Is that a town match? No, no, no. We have the you know the money that we put aside every year that comes in mm -hmm. from the fees and stuff, um, and that's covering some of it. But there was an opportunity, um, and and depending on how many other towns applied was going to depend on how much money went. So she went for the minimum, but then here was an additional if there was money left over. Well, fortunately, other towns, there was some money left over. So so she got the full 30. So I guess I need a motion to authorize Kim to to uh, sign for it. So we'll, yeah, there's two, <laughs> two, two signatures. One is accepting the grant, authorize her to do that. And the other one is signing a co-file grant or contract to do the work. To do the work, right. Okay. So I got a motion, need a second? Second. Okay, any more information needed or discussion? Terrific. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now we get to the fun stuff. Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can come up a little closer if you want. And why don't we start with Norm because, you know, or we can make him wait till the end and well, listen to all the other stuff. Norm today on the turnaround that we looked at. Years ago, yeah. Yeah. it's been for a year, yeah. <laughs> Off to the left before you get to the circle, or yeah. the hedgerow before we went out to the, the end of the road. Yeah. There's no great, great, great place, but I think that's the best spot we can find out there to make it out. And <laughs> do we have to wait another three years, or will this? I don't know where I have any time to make it. Done, but <laughs> right. Somebody look at me. I don't know where we're at with the low water separator. But if we're not, tank can come and not so start. Yep. We started our brush cutting today. Yep. We started their steam addition today. Uh, first, he's got three more colors to do on center road. The bottom part of center road is done. And lots of the brush cutting, pretty much getting on the truck later on. And the brush cutting is two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. My fan's on. Um, so, you got a comment that they can't hear, Mark. So, Mark, can you come up and get the mic? Just speak to it like you're at town meeting day, then everybody, you don't know, you can actually pull that out of there and just sit down with you, right? So whoever's going to speak from the crowd needs to talk into the mic. Thank you. Ah, okay. So, and I don't know on Prospect Street where we're going to stand out there as far as what we need to do, what a contractor is going to do, or if, if anything at all. So, right. That's going to be more determined tonight. So back on Norm's project, did we throw up the road beyond that? I mean, Bob, you know, was it Robert? Fockers? Bob Fockers? We, yes. We, did we throw that Yes. Up? I believe that's all legally done, right, Ron? All done, yes. Yeah. That's done. Yeah. So we gotta, we've got to build a turnaround on Norm's property. That's, what that's always doing. been the case, yes. Yeah. We've been turning around in his driveway and backing out to the hedgerow and coming out through. But so how big a project is it? To well, but it's not that big of a project. You have to get it done. So what's it going to look like, Norm? <clears throat> we talked about it a little bit when you and I and Roland met there. Are you going to 
you extend know, that Elm Street. Sort of the, the question is, is, you know, what's going to be the best solution? And quite frankly, there never has been a good solution for solving that street way back for years and years. And it got worse yeah. when Walter was there because he didn't move his car and, and do whatever. And so I guess he actually kicked the town off his property or what the hell the word was, which is irrelevant. Um, but so I think for three years now, we've been trying to play and figure out what's the best solution. And I, I'm not sure there is one, but you know, Mark had suggested that you could put a turn around out there. Um, and the only other way is to sort of fill in along the bank where the edge of the road is. And Mark would like to, to put the turn around in and I'm trying to cooperate with with whatever solution we come up with and so I I'm willing to try it and we'll see how it works. So the turnaround be out by the hedge? Yeah. It would, yeah. Okay. okay. So you'll go out and I'm trying to figure out how the truck will work in there. You come into that opening. Situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a place out there that you give it a little snow? Over the bank. Yeah, I can push it over the bank. You can push it over the bank. Oh, I, I, let me rephrase that. There, <laughs> there, I'm not sure, depending upon how you build the turnaround, because I think the turnaround has to be elevated on the on the lower end, which is going to provide some space for pushing snow. So, how long that works or how much snow you can actually push over there, I don't, I don't think we have any real idea no. yet other than coming up with a loader. I mean, yeah, that, that wouldn't be a great thing to run the loader from the, the dog to there to push it over. No, we go up anyway. That's what I was telling Norm. Right? We just got to build it big enough so we're busy three storms, we can't get out there or whatever. But there's room, you know, for to build up some, which we have. Talked about earlier because you can't run over every day. But, you know, you just got to make it long enough so you can just build it out, something, go out with the back or whatever and push it out. Which we've done anyway, I like on the corner there, we've done that prior years in a row. Yeah. Keep it pushed. So it's yeah. not. Okay. But let's, because it's, it's in some ways they are connected to Prospect Street. And um, and and what we want to do there, and we went out. We had a terrific meeting with them. I mean, the folks are, you know, are are, uh, are very helpful. Um, we want to. Who wants to? Brian, Rolly, you want to leap in? We were Mark. So we we went out there and we met with uh, six six of the yeah. uh, people living on the street there, uh, different houses. And uh, all offered some great uh, insight and in, uh, to what the road gonna look like and stuff like that, or what they want it to look like. And we talked about possibly um, on the corner, just past the church, uh, there's a telephone pole right on the roadside. We talked about possibly uh, getting that moved back about four feet. We talked to the lady that owns the property there. She was very nice, came out and discussed with us, talked with us, and she said that, um, it wouldn't be a problem for her to have that move back uh, uh, four feet onto the prop on her towards her property. It's actually some of it's right away in there. Um, and then uh, uh, we discussed. Um, we got one one of the persons coming right now. Um, we discussed that uh, uh, there's a road that goes out and goes around and comes back, making that a one way street. And what it does is it narrows the street down so it doesn't have to be as wide and then it doesn't take up as much of everybody's property out there. And uh, that seemed to be a good solution. Yeah, uh, and we went with, well and Mark marked it out and we figured here's where we turn it. And so we sort of, that's also going to involve at the end um, putting in some fill so that there's there's a place for the snow to actually get pushed out. Yes. Um, but but anyway, just with everybody in March, so we marked it all out to see exactly what it's going to look like. But then I'd say what happens, we went further back up the road because some areas where it's going to be widening, widened. And while if you're going to do this, moving the pole would be great. <laughs> However, first of all, if we can get permission to move the pole, 
that's a whole different thing, but that isn't anything that's going to happen in a couple of weeks. Okay, that would that would be a gigantic the process. process, which again, we have no idea if we'd be successful or not. So having come up with a great plan, we then came up with, but if we were going to move the pole and really do it right, oh, that's not going to happen immediately. So that rolls us back to, so what do we want to do short term to take advantage of the time to see if we can move the pole, right? That's right. Okay. So and there was concerns about uh, the water um, work that will happen at some point in time. We don't know exactly when, uh, but we were worried about putting down the pavement and then digging it all back up to put water in. So it's not cost effective to go that avenue, but we're trying to gain information on when that might be done. And so uh, I know it was thrown out there that we just put a, a coat, a thin coat over the um, a pavement on, on the street to, to cover up the worst part of it and then hopefully we don't have to tear it, uh, tear up all the new stuff and uh, to get the water lines in there down the street so it's a collaboration also with the village as it is with uh, the town so well something. well it is but i tell you the village <laughs> i don't believe that that project is going to happen with the water down there anytime in the next close number of years because they don't have a plan. They haven't bonded for it. Everything that they have to do to go through to, to do another big expensive project, I would say is years in the offing. So I, so I don't know what, <laughs> I don't want to end up having the folks on, on that road spending norm. It's only been three years spending eight years and the village still hadn't done anything and we're still piecemealing this thing together. Because if we if we go ahead and do it, it's just like on Main Street, part of the cost to the village in doing it is replacing the road back the way it is. So and I don't I don't think it makes a lot of sense to wait to figure out maybe if by next spring the village says, okay, we have a plan that's gonna be in two years, that would be different. Because it would take that amount of time again if we get an answer on the on the pole and we can move the pole. Um so it seems maybe if I've, if I've got time frames right here that we should figure out something to get us through this winter. So we just do, we sort of keep just limping the way we are and that gives time to see about moving the pole and assume that would all happen next year and then next year do all that work or is there any sense in trying to do any of it this year or do we just go, let's see what happens with the pole and limp with a with a small coat this year. Your input, Mark. Where do we stand on breaking the contract? I should we'll worry about that one after. But and I don't know break because you want to have them come down and do something, right? Roly, isn't that what you're thinking? That's what I was thinking. I mean that, that means we've got to do something with that bottom down there where we turn around and they're willing to, you know, let us fill some of that in to make it a smaller thing, do that for the winter and you know, blacktop around that corner for them guys. Right. And, um, you know, fix up what we have to. There's some potholes there. It's nothing too serious, but they were willing, all the people were willing to to, to let that go this year, just do a little bit of work to, to get everything done done right. White, widen the road like you guys agreed to. Um, you know, no. Just go skin coat this year. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, yeah. About what is it? About uh, down by, um, well, down by John Miners. It starts getting potholy and then do something around that corner and then get out of there, you know. That bump you guys were concerned about, I think they dug, it looked like to me, they dug a water line or sewer line across there and it settled, get that fixed up and then get out of there. Well, I think it also is going to be very important that. Uh... And then maybe over the winter and stuff, we can pull out of somebody. What are you going to do with the water down there? Yeah, I because think you, you guys had a lot of really good ideas down there. And you were um, you were coming up with lots of things really fast, which I don't, you know, that, that none of that's my expertise. So I only caught portions of it, but I kept thinking, doesn't doesn't there have to be a plan in place, or don't you you spend a bunch of money on a plan? The that you know to begin with, that the lines are drawn out, and I just wondered if you is that the next part of the process or? Um, 
No, we can we can go ahead and do something simple like that. Simple like yeah, that. yeah. But in terms of uh, doing the French dream and things that we were talking that about, one, that do you have like contractors for that, or do all the plan there with that, or is there? No, we got we got con town guys to do something like that. I'm telling you, this this French French drain is not going to be the answer. You know, yeah. you know that it, it's it's a it's a patch, you know, and I'm not sure what kind of soil it is there. I haven't dug there for years. It's sand. It's sandy. It's what? Sandy. Oh, great. That will work better than nothing, Mary, because we ain't got no place to put the water down. Here. Right. Even if we go ahead and close that all off, you're still not going to have no place to put the water. And you got to watch out for the village sewer that runs down over that bank. Yeah. That's another, you know, probably not a lot of water out there, but there's probably in the spring of the year, there's so, quite a bit. So, uh, so you're saying the shimmick, the width that it is this year? Yeah, just do what we can do because they're not, you know, they're, they're, they're happy with what they have got out there right now they're not complaining a bit you know just so we can get this we'll all on that us. center part where we marked off in the end yeah you know fill that yeah. in pay back yeah. for you guys can no, i just ask you guys quickly i think there's a bunch of people who are going to join by phone and i don't know if they um i know that as i walked in here it went it muted all because i think there was background noise and people weren't muted but then it all of a sudden i couldn't hear the meeting happening anymore and oh. I unmuted myself only because I know how to do it because I'm on meetings all day with a star six, but I don't know if people have responses on the phone and want to say anything and don't know how. Like I know um, our neighbor Paul um, is supposed to be on by phone right now and he's one um, who's been concerned. I think he wants to see the meeting happen sooner than later. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were able to hear from everybody. Yeah. What you got, Ron? I've got Three or four people that are on anonymous, but uh, nobody's raising their hand or trying to get in. Are they on by computer? Uh, it, I, I'm guessing if it says caller 346, they're only by phone. Right, so, so they, they can't have, raise their hand. They would have to know the star. <laughs> can we just say in the yeah. microphone if you have something to say? Yeah. Press star six. <laughs> yeah. You did already. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know if they can hear. It was really hard to hear. Yeah, I couldn't hear a word you guys were saying from No, it's house. all, it that's before. It's all fixed. So if they want to talk, they can talk. Because all, what you heard was wrong. It's been fixed. Okay, the way I see it, or, or look at it, if, if you folks are agreeable, which I think you are, is we shim it just the way it is right now, same width and everything, because the shim is going to last five, six years, if it has to be, because we don't know when the water project is coming. You guys want to get a smooth road, and, and when we can work with the village about moving the pole, uh, where the water is going to go, then we can sit down and put a plan together as far as width, drainage, all this other stuff that goes with it. Right, so we get we get a better solution, but not the final solution. Right. So yes. we, can, we, can, we can, does that seem uh, doable, Mark? Yeah. Then we just have to talk to the paving company. Oh, that's somebody talking to me. Oh, hold on. Wait. I can, I can barely hear you. Go ahead. No, I can I can hear you. I'll repeat your question. Uh, next, I think the board is going to take the winter to come up with a plan and discuss it with the neighbors. And, 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 and part of that depends on the issue with whether we end up moving the pole or not, and if the village has a better idea of when the water project will come down that street. Got it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, question is, if the pole goes back four feet, will the corner be as sharp? Well, well, still be that's, sharp. that's one of the things we're trying to we're do trying is to, to take that right. sharpness out of that corner, right? That's what you want. Right. And Peg, Peg, yeah, Peg didn't want to lose her sidewalk. She just wanted to be able to have you go beyond oh, it. Hold on, wait, wait. one at a time. Yeah, well, we can't. Yeah, I can't. 
can't hear. Okay, let her. What's her question? Who, you who is your it? Question? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think what you're asking is what we will be working out over this winter. I, nobody knows all those details yet. I think she's asking if, if the pole comes back four feet, what happens to all the rest of the area? Oh, okay, so, so yeah. when the new plan is drawn up, everybody will have a chance to look at it to answer some of those questions. But we don't know them tonight. Okay, you're welcome. I think that was just yeah. So, so the lady on the corner who was concerned about her sidewalk won't lose. It's basically going to stay the way it is, with some improvements at the end. Is that? Well, that's right? what he had to do. He had to take out that inside corner, so it wouldn't be so sure. sharp. Right. right. But I'm trying. We're trying to work with Peg, so she likes that sidewalk there. And they would kick a road back more on the other side, on the other side. Right. And it would be what probably a eighteen Please. inches. You you just split it from each one. Uh, no, but more than that because you're going from twelve to twenty. Two foot a piece. But she's really Peg's really strong on that side. She would love shoveling that all winter. <laughs> I think it's the tree. Uh, no, I don't. It's the tree. <laughs> Yeah, She'd be happy to have shoveling help, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that tree too, yeah. But she's mostly said that she didn't want to lose that sidewalk if we could go beyond it. Yeah. yeah that's... I think the worry is that the tree is right there, just a few feet from the road, and if the road comes and cuts, it's going to sweep all the snow. Her parents gave her that tree, and that is. So it's pretty sentimental to her, and uh, she's just worried about it, the fragility of it, with with all the snow piling up in the salt and maybe it getting down. And, and I'm sure that guys will work with her 100% to try to, you know, not get to that tree if we can kind of split on both sides. Hold on a second. Yeah. yeah. You have another question? Hello. Go ahead. Okay, so we'll we'll identify all the trees in the new plan that we need to talk about over the winter. Okay. Okay. So we're getting too lot off track here. You already have okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So we got it. We know what we're doing for the road for Prospect Street. Shim it from the corner out. Right? Pretty much. What are you saying? What I, what Dave, what you were saying to shim the whole thing. You know, why not? Shim the whole thing? Shim the whole thing. Dave, the whole thing, but inch and a half or whatever. And that was a hole. Well, further you have to go over the inch and a half because you can't get over those humps up here. Or where you got to do it. Yeah. You know, do it, do it right so it'll last five or six years if it's got to You're supposed to have a smooth road to uh, to uh, drive back and forth on. You're not going to have no tractor corner than you had before. And, and when we get the chance to work with the village, see if they can move the pole, then we can put together a a solution that we can work with the landowners over there. Everybody gets together and we'll make a plan to fix that regulation. Okay, so and that we're still putting the fill in for the for the snow over there and, uh, at the end of Circle My my yep. property yep. and Gary's combined. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. right. But that should be Mark, yeah. Mark yeah. Did, everybody. Mark did say he wanted to use gravel over there. Did you remember him saying that that night? Well, gravel gravel means different. If you're not on road things, gravel means a completely different thing. <laughs> no, but around right, that right. corner because right. you know, he's, and he's got a point that 
if you don't put gravel there and you put all soil topsoil there, you're going to go yeah. in there and go drop. Right. Right. Now, right. At least if you put gravel in there and compact and then, you know, put some topsoil and whatever. Next top of that. There. Right. Is that a fair solution for you folks? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> But do you understand about the compactability of the gravel? The gravel will hold those heavy trucks, and then the topsoil will be on top of that. So, how, so you're from that stake that you placed in, would that be gravel all the way forward? I'm not sure which stake. Remember, the stake you're, you're, you're talking the about. Oh, one on the yeah. Yeah. The stake yeah. out in the yard, that's where you were going to try to level oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. be out there, yes. And that'll be gravel out there, yeah. tapered. And then there'll be topsoil, uh, a layer of topsoil on top of that. But you know, the gravel's got to be there to sustain the weight of the vehicles. And it's fine with me. I think. And, and don't topsoil it this fall. Wait till next spring. And when they come back to topsoil it, your gravel and everything will be covered up. And you won't have to mess with what you're using to mess with. So wait and topsoil it. In, in the spring. spring. Right. We'll cover up the mess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then it will be grass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But there's no point in putting it on in the fall because it's you're just gonna lose it's it. Not gonna grow right. Yeah. Right. And you're just gonna lose the it. The last little uh tidbit and tidbit. I don't know if this is where you were headed, but could we talk about a replacement tree? Yeah, Well, you wouldn't want to do anything until we do all the work there. Right. So we're looking at potentially six years out. No, 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 just until we, and, and again, when we've got an idea next year and when the town, when the village is thinking and when it might be, and when they come and put the topsoil in where we're doing the, the expansion, that's, they can put some topsoil in and we should know from the village exactly where the, where the water and sewer lines are. And then you can go ahead and put something in there, but you don't want to do that until next spring or next summer. Right. Well, all right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure we didn't have to wait. Right. Ten years for the right. Shouldn't have. That shouldn't be tight. If we if we could if we could get an answer in the next five months just to figure out are they going to do the water or aren't they going to do the water? That's the big thing. Yep. Great. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So. That took care of prospects, so we, they're going to have to talk to the to Hutchins and figure that part out, which leads me to then, is there anything we could do with norms that we would need Hutchins to do anything? I was attempting to tie them together. That was my... Well, they won't come with any dirt equipment. They're just going to go out and shim it. So, no, there's nothing really to okay. do unless we're going to pay the shimmer in. Okay. Did you throw out there what that woman said at the end? No, uh, don't they turn around out there? Oh, um, I, I did run it by Mark here that uh, um, her name's Allison, I don't remember her last name, but out there with Falkers were. And, uh, uh, but Mark told me immediately that it would been, had been given up. Right. Okay. And so we don't want to go back. No, we're not going that way. That no, <laughs> we're not going that way. <laughs> Okay, so I think that takes care of prospect. <clears throat> Norm, what else do you need to know? You just need to get it done before it snows. <laughs> okay, okay. That may be tomorrow, right? Okay. Well, that's, that's true around here. Okay, hopefully that will get done. Okay, do we for Mark have any more questions? Because we've got all the, we got the sheriff and crew and speeding and what we can do to deal with as well. Everybody get my contact information. I know. No one you do and the ladies have, yeah. So you can get hold of me if uh, you have questions or anything like that as, as the process goes forward. Yeah. Cooper. No, thank you. You guys have been very, very helpful. Yeah, we appreciate there. you coming. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just ask if there's any does anybody else online have a question before we close? Put your mind on the head star six. Yeah, it's done. They can hear you really well. <laughs> nope. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we're not too far behind. Um, 
we're gonna we're gonna go to traffic and speed control in in uh, in Hyde Park. Um, yeah, see if Roger needs it. We'll thank you, uh, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, there have been a uh, uh, periodic comments on uh, on uh, front porch forum um, about speeding, and there have been uh, uh, varieties of of um, issues we did last year, and we came up and we had a uh, we had a plan. We talked. Be First of all, we need to get all the roads posted. So we went through coming up with agreed upon. The public gave us good input on the speeds and what we need to do on the roads and then getting all the signs and getting them posted. And we usually put about $5,000 a year into the signs currently to get all the roads that need to be done around the math to $18,000 that, that, that we need. And we... <laughs> We had a terrific solution, and then COVID came along. Um, we were going to have the uh, the the uh, not the the town crew, but the uh, work crew. Uh, the, work. Brian, Brian's Vermont work crew. Yeah, work Vermont. Crew. But our thought this is Brian's crew um, to to do the work, um, and we were all set to have them. They were set to have that done, and then COVID came along, and that just is gone, and it's just not working. So. So checking with corrections, who knows when those programs are going to be up and running and safe and they get difficult again. Uh, so I had asked Ron to check and see what um, what it needs. And, and again, we thought this is an opportunity to, to have the sheriff come in and talk about speeding. Um, people get very uh, frustrated. I'm sure my, my neighbor Patty's on the phone. You can hear. Um, it, it it's difficult and people have people speeding past their their houses and um, they want to call the sheriff and I appreciate they want to call the sheriff but I'm not quite sure what is what you can do with a phone call when somebody comes past your house and the sheriff unless they happen to be sitting right there so I thought maybe we'd invite Roger to come in and talk to us just about some of the general issues and uh, and give folks that are um, uh, that want to to give us some feedback. I've had a couple of phone calls from uh, from folks just being concerned about how fast people are traveling. Of course, there are a lot more people at home, so a lot more people walking and riding bikes and being all up and down the sides of the roads. So there's more of that, that traffic going on. Um, and I'll and I'll throw in Dave. We'll throw in some a, an ATV conversation someplace in here too, because that's been a good conversation with folks. And you went to the we went to the club meeting and they talked about it as well. So, sort of that very general background, Sheriff Marku. How would you like to make all these people be courteous and drive properly? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a plan for that? I haven't come up with one in 18 years, but uh, we'll uh, we'll continue to try. Um, just by way of background and preparing for this um, meeting tonight, I thought what I'd do is go back and, and have a look at what our statistics look like for the year from January to, uh, to the present. And before I do that, I want to just uh, point out to the, and present uh, Deputy Dan Rock, who is on duty right now, and I asked him to stop in just because if, in case there are some questions that I uh, um, that were better answered by him since he's one of the, the, the deputies that are actually out on the road working. But, uh, so, so far this year, in the COVID year, which is a, a, an anomaly here, but uh, uh, we've had about a thousand calls to date uh, to today. And I'll go down and, and, and just point out some of the types of calls they are. So, so that you all and people listening to get an idea as to you know, what, is, what it is that we deal with. We keep in mind that um, Johnson is just a tad bit smaller, a, a tad bit bigger than Hyde Park and we've got Wilkert. So we're, we're rushing from the Hardwick Wilkert line to answer complaints down to the Cambridge Johnson line. Roger, can I, how do you go about that far away from your map? How far am I now? Just a couple inches. Okay, got it. Okay, so 
Okay. Um, so is that a, okay? Morning, Jade. Okay. Yeah. See you yeah. Okay. So um, we, we're going to hit some of the, the high volume calls, but we've had uh, um, seven different accidents where people have actually been injured. Uh, and we've had uh, 10 uh, million hang up calls, which we have to respond to. We've had 23 accidents uh, um, that were property damage only. So you either have a, an accident with somebody injured or, or an accident with just property damage, but it still um, results in you having to, um, to respond. We've had 25 alarms. And the alarm conversation is one that I would like to have maybe not tonight, but uh, uh, most municipalities now are registering their alarms and, and, um, and actually charging for false alarms after a certain grace period. And I think uh, most towns still have those policies in place. So that's something we may want to talk about in the future. Um, we've had uh, about 20 million agency assists, and that's where we respond uh, in assisting the nice time or, or uh, a star or the state police, and they return the favor. Anything that we do in uh, the town of Eden, uh, we have an arrangement with Eden where we send them um, uh, an hourly uh, and pay us, and that was uh, Management we came up several years ago. We've assisted the public over 60 times and, um, and uh, we responded to 36, uh, uh, 36 citizen disputes. We've directed patrol in the speaks to speed and we've directed patrol uh, 31 times. So that means if we happen to be all caught up in the paperwork and we don't have any incidents going, the, the one person that we generally have on duty uh, uh, can, can go to Sunnyville or, or a place like that uh, and, and just have a presence. Even though we don't have the signs yet, sometimes having a police car there, if we can do that, uh, is, a, is a deterrent. So um, we've had several drug investigations um, and several DUIs. And uh, it's where we have to get through the machine here. Fourteen juvenile problems, and a lot of that is um, uh, a lot of those um, that usually would be we would be busier with that, uh, but we did not have school from uh, my child, and we haven't had. Uh, school in the way that we know, as everybody knows, uh, right now. So, uh, we've helped, um, uh, with the, um, we've helped moms on several occasions. We've had 57 motor vehicle complaints, again, which speaks to loud cars, cars, screen cars, or what have you. And, you know, I imagine it's some of that, what, what you all are interested in, in trying to, to mitigate. So, uh, other than that, we've had about a hundred suspicious events, which are uh, uh, calls that just don't fall into uh, the regular um, categories, and um, 213 traffic stops right now, and keep in mind that we were not, um, from March till about June, we were being very, very judicious as, as far as when we were going out of the office and things. So, you know, if you have somebody involved in domestic violence or somebody being hurt, we have to go. And it doesn't matter if, if COVID is, you know, you know, we just do the best we can in, in terms of protecting our, our deputies. But we did not be much proactive. But lately, I would say uh, probably in the last six weeks then, we really started working on um, uh, uh, a lot of traffic stops and everything. Yeah. Okay, and that's all shifts. That's not the stage shift. That's the evening shift. That's the night shift. Uh, I personally noticed that people have been speeding in spots that I hadn't seen them speeding before COVID, or making a point to get out there and slow them back down. You know, and sometimes maybe that's not even making a car stop, but just being there. Uh, just letting them see the cruiser there again, and they're like, okay, you know, it's time to slow back down. 
So the, the bottom line is, is, is in a perfect world, we'd have a deputy dedicated to doing traffic work. That's what Johnson wants. That's what Orca wants. And that's what the citizens of Hyde Park want. Because uh, probably day in and day out, people don't call you to report domestic violence. They, they call you to report speedies and, and, and those kind of cases. So um, I know that we have the committee going on uh, looking into you know, the, the future of law enforcement for the three towns. And, um, uh, but I will tell you that um, there's a lot of serious cases out there that we are dealing with, but uh, speeding is, is a problem for the people that it's a problem for. And, and we have the best intentions of running the or what have you, but when you're getting called to different calls, it's just difficult to spend a lot of time or on a regular basis. And certainly, rush hour, uh, both in the means that you know, the worst times of day for that, but we have three teams that would like you during the rush hour. Uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, North Wilco Road, Carlo, uh, Single Road, those are all in three teams at the same time and are demanding our services. So, so it's, it's, um, you know, it's a similar issue that we've, you know, we've heard about from, from us. It's, it's just a question of, uh, uh, having the staffing to, to take care of, uh, um, directing deputies to where you go, you know, for the next few hours and sit on some of the road or, or, you know, wherever, some of the road. And, um, uh, you know, this, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's only so much you can do with one, one person on shift. And then, uh, you know, they are part of the shift on a lot of days that we have two people on. And, uh, there was, uh, two Saturdays ago where I think Dan was working. He couldn't even get to the hospital of one DUI before he went into another one before there was another car accident with another DUI. So it's, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's our situation. Well, and I know just because Roger, you and I have talked, but it's the, the the nature of law enforcement um, has changed and continues to change and the number of of uh, well there are the DUIs but there's domestic violence there's the substance misuse there's the uh, again there are a lot of issues needing to protect children um, and and obviously you know speeding is important and people fear for an accident. But if as law enforcement personnel, if you're making a choice between sitting on the road, stopping and slowing people down and getting kids out of an abusive situation, there really isn't any choice there. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do what is, what is the most pressing. And that's, and that's what's difficult, which is for us has led to and thought maybe, you know, start to get some ideas about, um, about traffic calming, the, um, the speed, you know, the speed sign things that we have, um, you can, when those are up, you can definitely, you, you watch people hit the brakes because those really are good reminders for people to just be conscious of how fast they're, you know, how fast they're going. Um, it, 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 excuse me, sir. No, I'm a traffic sign. But it allows a job at marketing those. You know, we provided those for the three towns, two, two signs apiece that we, we, we used our money that we were doing doing special details and other things. And we contributed to, to the communities. And we really, we really didn't let the public know that we did that. And that would have been an indication probably that we were trying to work with the communities. Right, right. Um, Roger, can I say something? Yep. I just want to, I'm going to try something here for the public, so I don't, okay. know, how you, I don't know how you want to manage it, but the back and forth, but there's people that you almost have to take a break at some point before you switch to another whole topic. Oh, yeah. So but, but it's not there. Just sort of get some no, information say, out there and then let people ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, that's, that's right. Tell them, we'll, we'll get to you, folks. Don't worry. We know Thank you're you. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's one thing, Roger, that I, Eden Street, 
was complaining about speed, complaining about everything. And then I get talking to Brackett Bill and stuff. And I think y'all have, I know there's one that's sat down for the animal hospital police officer, but I think what's missing here, I don't think this traffic is traveling as fast as people think it does. I think it's the noise. These Harley Davidsons get together, these motorcycles get together. Roger, I've lived up here 45 years. And when these guys come through, it sounds like they're doing 60 miles an hour from that roundabout at Michael's. And it's the same thing with these little small cars with these, but then they got mufflers like this big on them. And they're, they're doing 30 miles an hour, but it sounds like they're doing seven. You know, I think the law enforcement officers have got to get on top of that and start backing them down because I think there's a law about a noise. I don't think the law enforcement officer is in the spectrum stations. No, but they're the ones out on the road. Yeah, so if they're, if an inspection station inspects a car or a motorcycle with a muffler that is not um, approved, then it's defective equipment. I, so. I don't know what I see in my life, or what I think I see, is I'm going to get a ticket for speeding. Nobody can do anything now because of this COVID virus. So everybody's gone out and bought a bicycle. Or people are walking up on my place. Uh, you see five, six people walking up through there having a good time. And if people go by, a lot of people are courteous and pull over. A lot of people aren't courteous. They only go halfway over. And people think that there's people that are going by. And, and um, doing my work hours with my radio, it's almost a constant thing, especially Wilson State Police. Uh, Car just went by me swerving. But the car is uh, crossing the yellow line, you know, and it's constant, constant calls to the police departments. And uh, uh, everybody thinks that they're, they're speed. Yes, you are going to get speeders. You're going to get that certain percent. It's always going to speed. I don't care if you put up signs every 20 feet, they're going to speed. But another thing, I don't it, think, it, I think it may not be as fast as, as people are thinking, because you're right. when. When you're standing still or you're walking and somebody goes by you at 35, it feels really fast, I, you know. But but let me, can we roll it just one more and then let's, I know we got folks back. Another thing is, I think the police officers ought to start looking at, start looking at these windshields and these side windows because you can't even see the people in the cars are darkening and everything's up so much. I mean, I know there's trucks out there on the road. Look at some of these trucks. That's a, that's not late. Unless you have a, a note from the doctor. Um, get some sunglasses so people can make money. <laughs> so, so what we're talking about really speaks to the lack of having someone out there doing the work. Okay, and I'm not going to say we're going to do it at all. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. What I'm seeing up to yeah. my point yeah. is set up there on a Sunday morning. Have police officers set up on pitch hill. They're sitting at the wrong place on, on down through there. Instead of sitting down in the animal hospital, set up the other end up by my place up through there and watch them down from more so over through. I mean it's it's terrible. Okay. Ron, what do what do we have for folks that want to ask um, questions? So we're gonna unmute everybody. <laughs> and anybody that's on phone, uh -oh. <laughs> anybody that's on phone that wants to talk can hopefully be heard here. So go ahead. Ron? Yeah. This is Patty. Can I see? Go for it. Yeah, go for it, Patty. Tell us, see if she can.
movement by the war. 30, I can handle. 35, and anything over that, Louisiana gets to tell the difference. And when we call the police station to report a speeding, they want the license number. The cars are going so fast, you can't get a license plate number because you can see a person. If you know who the person is and you give that name, why can't that person be called or whatever? I don't have a license plate, but I have a name. You should be able to look that up, correct? Yeah, it's more complicated than that, but uh, I get it. There's speeding up there, and, uh, and it's a quality of life issue for the people that live there. You know, I understand that, and we just got to try to figure something out. Uh, we're not going to get a successful prosecution on a civilian saying somebody was speeding. Um, we've got to be up there with a radar or something that the courts are going to accept. So that's our problem in our end is to how to do that. Um, you know, we're and, and, you know, having the same problem with the ATVs as well. Well, you don't, Roger, don't see it, let's see. Technically, if somebody, if, if somebody goes, um, is speeding, and I got their license plate number, um, then you know that, oh, okay, then you know that the car was speeding. If I can see if I, but if somebody saw me and they're driving, I say, Bartlett just went, you know, and I didn't get the number, but Bartlett was driving. Um, that's, that's not going to hold up because no, I can call up and say anybody was driving. I right? think the point of it is, is that we have to try to respond when people come to the, the call and say, probably get all of what you're saying, but the point of the call is, is that, you know, if, if you know, if someone says it's been speeding, you know, it's if the insurance department can talk to those people at the very least. Right. Well, they don't give out five cards, and I can actually tell you what they look like and who's driving them, but I can never tell you your license plate because they're going too fast. Okay. Um, let me, let me talk to you. Dispatch and some of my folks because I'm unaware that people are calling me with names and what have you. So let me, well, I mean, all of these calls are recorded. So I guess I've got a little bit of homework to do there. Uh, Patty, did you get that answer? If you will go back to the office and check. I did not hear Roger at all. Yeah, I'm just I'm repeating. Well, I get a hold of down here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm si How about now? That's better. Yes, that's better, right? <laughs> I know who it is now. Is that better, Patty? Yes. Okay, I was holding it way too close. I'm, I apologize. So, uh, when I get back to the office here um, in the next couple of days, let me s let me talk to our dispatch and some of our other folks. I was unaware that people are actually calling in on a regular basis with names of speeders. So, you know, somehow we've got to work with you all on that. So, uh, bear with me. Roger, just so you know, the last call that was made from his factory from my son, and the dispatcher that called told him he was unaware of any complaints on this road. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, again, I'm a little blind, but, um, uh, let me, uh, maybe I can get your number from, you can give it to Ron or something so we can talk further on it. I would love to. Thank you. And you're right, I would, Patty, I would agree with you that just recently, you know, your big speed sign was at the fire station, which was enlightening as to how fast maybe you come across that road. But if down at, you know, into my road or, or the Hayfords who are right there at the end of it, you know, putting it right there because people, they may do pretty well, but as soon as it starts to go downhill, that's where they start speeding up. So by the time they hit, go past the Hayfords or they're going past our driveway, they certainly are increasing their speed. <laughs> we'll let it go at that. Sure. So that might sometime be a good spot for that sign just to we're educate people. Whereabouts, Susan? This is right at the end of at the entrance of our driveway. Right. And this is Patty who was talking is that house right there. Right. So where would be where are you recommending where we put that 
sort of someplace right there by the Hayfords or our okay. driveway, someplace right, right in that area. So, which way they're going fast? Up or down? No, no, they're, they, they're getting a lot better about slowing down, but it's when they're leaving and, the, and once they get part way out the Centerville Road and then, you know, it starts to slow and that's where they start accelerating. So by the time they get to by the time they get to my driveway, they're they're really accelerating, and then they're straight down Centerville, and they're long gone. Okay, we know. We say, again, we know the areas and see the issues, but part of it is is for better law enforcement, and again, some ideas about again other things that we can do, and what might be helpful, Roger, because I know I've had heard you know people. Ooh, there was somebody else, I think maybe it was out in the Cy Searles end of town, and they were talking about, or and it may have been another time on the center or the Centerville Road. I don't remember which one it was, but somebody, and it was happened to be a younger person, and they were driving, and people were trying to get them to slow down, and everybody knew who it was. And I think somebody actually went over to the house and said, Hey, listen, you know, this isn't working, you need to slow down. And they just got laughed at and basically told they weren't going to pay any attention to them. So so letting people know that if they if they know somebody is doing it and figuring out a way to be able to, when the whole neighborhood says, here's who's driving and what they're doing, to be able to reach out to your office would certainly be a, figure out some way to deal with that would be helpful. Because I, because I think um, things that we can find to do that can help you do that, as I think you would find people are, would be happy to participate in that. We just need to find out sort of what's what's legal and what's effective and what we can do. We may end up having to uh, or inviting people to some kind of a community meeting up that way. Um, yeah, I'll I, I will uh, um, get together with uh, some of my folks here tomorrow or or in a couple of days and uh, see how to best approach this because, you know, we're having the same issues in other towns as well. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm sure you can talk to Morrisville or still. I mean, I don't think this is a uniquely sheriff's issue. And there have been, if I'm right, there have been more people killed with the, the state troopers are showing more people have been killed on the roads and you think there'd be fewer with yeah. less people out. So Yeah, the, the difference between Morrisville and Stowe is they have generally – They've got uh, more than than uh, two, you know one person out yeah. there. So theoretically, you could have somebody taking calls and somebody maybe doing more traffic work. So uh, you know, as usual, it's nothing that uh, more money can't cure. But uh, absence of that, we got to figure something different. So All right, let's check in one more time. Go go ahead, whoever's on the line. Find out who it is. Is that Patty? Do you have a question? No, I just said I would like to be on whatever committee comes about to help with this issue. Because I know this isn't the only road. That road road is awful. Center yeah. road is awful. They're all bad. Okay. That's, that's all I hear from the online folks. Okay. <laughs> see, see a lot of head shaking. You say maybe that, that there's want to. Um, one of the things that, that we had um, when, we were, when we were doing the this, this study and working in the village and we looked at, and I mentioned in passing to Roger, and I think it's something we ought to figure out to do a little homework on, but in, I think of it usually in... Um, within town limits, but they're these movable um, so that they aren't permanent speed bumps that you can put in place. So that you don't, they aren't there permanently. So the road crew in the, you know, in the winter time, they're not dealing with plowing. And I have certainly been through communities that have used these. So you, you do, well, they aren't, they're, they're real speed bumps, but they aren't permanent speed bumps. Um, to slow people down is a way of slowing people down. And I don't know if maybe that's something we want to, you know, we want to check out. My my question to Roger is, what would happen if you put those out, like on the, you know, on the center road? Um, yeah, but there's, there's speed yeah, 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 yeah. There's speed or signs. Right. 
But you really have to do that on like a 15 mile per hour road or something. Small. Speed yeah, down in the village, right. You couldn't do it on like Center Hill because you can't have traffic on the other side. It'll be a liability to launch the car off the road. But if you want to catch people for speed, you go up there, like a clear place in my neighbors, and, and put the radar there. You want to catch people for speed, you go to North Northside Park by the fire station, you catch people for speed. Anytime that you go from a 50 miles an hour down to 25 miles an hour, people don't do that right at the friggin' line. They let off the gas and they go down slow down. Now, people may think people are speeding, but I don't think the problem is as great as. It is. We're making it great here, but it is. Well, we're getting a lot of complaints, and whether they are or not. Yeah, you know, people are concerned about it, we, and that's we, the right. So, you know, I, I, as the sheriff, I just can't dismiss mm -hmm. stuff. I got to look into it and, and uh, you know, try to work with folks. But I, I still think sometimes they're louder than. It just makes them sound like they're yeah, yeah, I mean, sure you take, a, you take I'm a, sure there's a lot of that. You take a you take an ambulance, you take a fire truck or whatever. If they shut that siren off, you never know they were going. But if you turn that siren on, you think you're doing sixty miles an hour. You wonder, does your radar truck go for now? No. But I think there's a way to uh with this new one, I think there's a way to get information uh, you know, on a download type thing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that would be we helpful. We gotta show you, you know, like down here. Here's the true fact. Here's yeah. what they're actually doing. Yeah, well, right. See, but there, there's a lot that again, there's a lot that can be done if we just have the people to do it. You know, I mean, you know, certainly the department could. Uh, you know, I think we're in a position where we could probably purchase another cart. Uh, but it really does, it takes boots on the ground, as they say, to, to get out there and, and to, you know, you, you may have people speeding that aren't, you may have people speeding that are a lot worse than other people speeding than, you know, so it, it's, what works best with this stuff is the visibility of a, of a deputy's car out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did this four or five years ago, Ron. The state did, did a uh, traffic thing up on the center road. Center road, yes, they did. Okay. And everybody was speeding up there, and so we had the state go up there, and they did a monitor, and the average speed was 54 miles an hour. And right now, if they're not posted, right. it reverts back to the state speed limit of 50. Right. 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 So, so each section of the road was different on those speeds. But, uh, I think when you have a high speed like 50, and then you have an acceptable speed of 50 to 60 in the sense of practical driving. Mm -hmm. Then Roger's response for the, let's say 15% of the drivers that are in that 60 range, you know, they, they push it on the high end. Those are, the, those are what people see when they're mowing the lawn by the edge of the road and they get the wind blows by them and things right. like that. Yeah. So how, how do you, where, where, what do you want your goal to be? Roger can put three people on directed patrol in each town and get the speed limit down to one over if the boards of the town want to do that. So there's, there's got to be a discussion about where your acceptability is in the sense of the whole scheme. Right now, there's no overall goal. I think if you do take those speed tests and the speed uh, monitoring down and you say, we're going to monitor these roads, roads and we want to get them within seven over. You know, they, they call it the 85th percentile is the technical term, but every road that we have, we're going to work with the sheriff to get to that specific number so that you don't have the anecdotal stuff. You have right, the scientific right. answer. Not hard to do. We have an annual speed uh, study program with the regional planning. We have history already, so we can see changes. We did tests in the village before and after the, the byway was open. You know, for volume count, not a speed count. Uh, so I guess that, that's more of my discussion that right. Roger's trying to have in a respond to the public perspective, but the town needs to say, how much money do you want to put in it to get where? Right. Where, where do you and want to be? I'd say the first thing we need to do is get the roads posted. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the basic thing that you can't have speed control without the speed control. Exactly. Control. There, there is another so provision of the law that we use in the wintertime mostly, and it's driving too fast for conditions. 
So that means that you don't have to uh, basically know how fast they were going. Uh, you just have to be able to prove if it goes to court that they were driving too fast for the conditions. You may have a, a posted limit of 40 miles an hour uh, and, and it's a, you know, a snow covered road or something like that. And that's too fast to take a corner or something and somebody out ends up in the bushes. So there's, there's different things we can work with, but I think that this is, we've got to come up with a, with a short term solution. And then um, this group that is meeting about law and, you know, enforcement, the future law enforcement, Hyde Park, Johnson and, and Wilka have got to consider that you're going to have to have somebody dedicated to doing traffic work. And would, you, would you consider a, a dedicated sort of contract or a subcontract? In other words, the, over the years I've been here, the sheriff's department has come with these almost identical, we're trying to respond to people's needs. Then you add opiate addiction, you add family issues, and those seven officers and deputies are taken up with all, all of that. If the town's going to say, all three towns say, oh, okay, we're going to commit $80,000, which is about the cost of a full time directed patrol officer, just like the detective argument, is that something that does, takes off the other seven that we were envisioning? That's the idea. We've gotten a, a grant position from the feds that we wanted to add that seventh person, and I, I envisioned that person as a community liaison deputy that would do speed enforcement. Our problem is that we cannot get anybody to apply um, to be a deputy. I've got two open positions right now, full time. One's a transport deputy, one's a grant position. We're not getting any applications with people that, um, uh, y you know, that, that fit the, uh, would fit, like fit, our, fit our needs. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and again, that's another conversation you have about the retirement issue. And, and so, again, um, that's exactly what would need to happen, though, Ron, is that no matter who the law enforcement agency was, is you'd have to have somebody dedicated to doing traffic work. How about a shared um, person with the three towns? Well, that's what he's talking about. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. So then you yes. have, you know, yeah. two, two point, what, two and a quarter days per town? Two and a half. Yeah. Three towns. Yeah. How, we have a ratio based on the size yeah. of the town. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Hyde Park is, is just under 40%, Johnson's 40%, book is around 20. Yeah. Oh. So that's, and I, Jericho does this, I think, with a combination of state police contract and sheriff, to the county sheriff, and they direct that officer not to do anything else unless it's almost like a national emergency. And right. they are there just for a certain number of right. hours per week. And they and you know when you're on Brown Street Road by the high school that when school's coming in and getting active, you'll see two or three of them working together on that whole long strip that stretch, yeah. between Route 15 and Richmond. And cars go about five over. You know, just my own I have kids at high school. <laughs> I know they go about five over. They don't do ten over and they're not doing fifteen and they're not passing each other. Because that road is just like this enough. You can't really see down the road. So there there can be a level of service that the sheriff could provide with Probably one more deputy, but right. maybe two across all three towns if you really want to pump it up a little bit. We're also seeing more people run from the police. They won't pull over for blue lights. And then, you know, they're, they're going tremendous speeds where we break off the, um, break off the, uh, uh, the, the pursuit. And, uh, it's just alarming to see more and more of that going on. And I think that a good piece of that is is because of the drug situation but uh um but it's still someone you know local is going too fast so. okay we have anything else for right now i would just that's what i was gonna say would say with the cars right because we had gotten some uh some phone calls and emails from folks that were concerned about the ATVs, you know, and we opened up the road for 
uh, pieces of the road for for connections. Um, and there were some concerns, and Dave and I were talking about it. And um, it's, it's sometimes it's, life is all about timing, and it was perfect timing because the local ATV club was having a meeting. So um, so Dave went to the meeting to just share with them some of the concerns that we were hearing from folks. And what'd you hear, Dave? Well, most of the uh, uh, complaints coming in that they're speeding up and down the road, the ATVs are speeding up and down the road. I'm going to lean back on rolling. They sound they sound faster than what they're going. Uh, so in our ordinance, we ought to put you got to have soft exhaust on. Uh, I met like I said, I went to the ATV meeting. I met the new president, Chad the Colonel. Uh, the vice president is Spencer Levitt, and their uh, uh, trail master is Kyle Hill. And very very nice people that they. Say they understand the uh, the uh, uh, situation. They said they tried to work with the sheriff's department. Sheriff's department don't have the manpower nor the time to do it because of a different yeah. record set, which yeah. is understandable. Uh, what they don't want to do, they don't want to lose lose high fire uh, or any other town. In, in fact, I hear they went more so select warden that's going to start up in the roads. Uh, so you can go from here to Johnson. Well, anyways, I went back that next morning and I had a meeting with the sheriff and uh, basically said the same thing that you heard tonight. But I was talking to them and they put our roads on the Vasa map, which means they're considering that the Vasa trail. Vasa has money for law enforcement. Uh, Orleans County, they bought them a uh, ATV, bought the Game wardens, right? Game wardens that are in charge of ATV factually. They go into their jurisdiction. Uh, they, they uh, Walt donated a ATV for them to patrol the roads. Um, I'm sure they won't do it for the Mile County, but uh, Jag said that uh, Bassa has money to, uh, to uh, pay for somebody to patrol. That's all good to what the sheriff just said, but when you're shorthanded and these guys are working 50, 60 hours a week, they want some time spending the family. So, you know, they can't be working yeah. 100 hours a week to do this. Yeah. So, all the trails are going to close, I think it's the 15th of October. It is every group different. Yes, uh, every group is different. Now, facet trails. All, all that. Uh, facet trails. Either the first. No, 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 it's either the first or the 15th. So, we're only two weeks out, two, three weeks out from, from these problems and stuff. And the Green Mountain ATV writers are going to work with with Vasa, with Danny Hale, which is president of Vasa. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, see what we can do to come up with some funding for some money. And then we'll go to the sheriff's department and say, we got this amount of money, how much patrol can you give us? Can you give it two hours a, a weekend or something? Well, and, the, and, and I think, again, because that sort of tends to be where the concerns are coming from, you and I, I think, tend to be the ones that drive those roads more often than, and, and, um, and again, I think it's like in some places there are going to be certain areas where people may be more apt to speed than other areas. Mm -hmm. But the sound is certainly part of it. And I've since had a couple of conversations with folks that are that are not, you know, ATV riders. They yeah. aren't, you know, they don't sort of like I am. It's just you're kind of neutral ab about the whole thing. And they've commented on the number of people that they've seen, but it's interesting. <laughs> it really was as a positive because they were seeing it as, you know, as families yes. and people were driving very carefully and people were being very, very respectful and people were, you know, were very friendly. So it's obvious, and they, as many things, it's in the winter time, it's with the folks on the snow machines. Yeah. It only takes a couple of them being terribly disrespectful to give everybody a bad name and, and you know, and people complain. 
I, and I think, Dave, you and I in talking about it, you pointed out something that I'd, I certainly wouldn't have thought of. But of course, there are more people going out, and I, and I know those sorts of sales have increased, so there are probably more people riding. But with all things being, being equal, um, ATV riders, Vermont, Vermont has not put a real, we want to encourage ATV riding. Where New Hampshire has put out a really, I mean, they've, you know, they are really encouraging it and support it, and it's a, and it's a big deal. So I think we probably have a lot more people on our roads right now with ATVs that sometime when the world goes back mm -hmm. to normal and you can easily cross state lines and you don't have to worry about spreading the virus or quarantining or anything, a lot of this traffic will probably go back over to New Hampshire. Um, and, and that's good or bad, but I think that that's part of the increase in the number of folks, again, just being aware of it as there are there are more people on bikes and walking and everything else. There are more folks on uh, on ATVs. Yeah, just this weekend, from light to dark, I had 12 to go by the audience. And one of them was a group of five. And, and they had the, the husband, the wife, and the kids. One of them pulled over and talked to me. I had a five-year-old boy with me and stuff. And they already had to head up the cage and get lunch. Now, there's $70,000 worth of taxes at the state now. Not saying that they will not saying that the, the eats or they spent the night down sunset. You know, they spend money here. You know, it's no difference in the. Uh, yeah. Go to Newport on the weekend. You see how many ATVs are in Newport City down. Yeah, it is huge. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, really want to see how it works, go over to Berlin, New Hampshire. There's more uh, ATVs on the road and there are cars over there and they love them. Yeah. They love them. And they, they're constantly improving. Trailhead is at the sunset. You go by there on the weekend, we see a lot of trail. That's why you get a lot more. Well, that's right. You're getting the traffic and that's why so some people head. are, right. They're, so they're being concerned the about that. Right. Right, right. And that's, and that's where the concerns are coming from, that there's more and that people are speeding and it's too noisy. And I think the, the noise issue in the mufflers is, is I uh, valid. No. But, well, yeah, we can, we but, can. But I mean, you know, that puts it back on the police. Right. What do we know about, or, you know, what do some police know about what's the stock exhaust and what is it? They get stock, it's fire arrested drugs. But, but you know, my point is, is that we're not, we're getting into a whole new thing here with ATVs and unless you're around those. Um, right. But anyways, we, we can't even, we haven't even got the, uh, the car, the car speeding issue sorted out. Yeah, because that's right. We'll deal with cars. We're not going to, nothing we can do about the ATVs right now, but just be aware of it again fairly soon. They won't be. I'll be out any longer and we'll see what happens next spring for, for folks. Like everything else, people that want to, you know, be respectful and, and, and obey the laws, do it. And yeah. like those folks stop and visit you and yeah. people that don't, don't. A lot of people yeah. Stop yeah. Them, I get a lot of I've seen a lot of them on the road. The majority are, the majority are right. up on the north road. Or, Silver Ridge Road, I sat up there for an hour one morning because I had a phone call. They were speeding up there, and every one of them, it must have been 15, went by that morning. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of hour. people, it's just suddenly the increase in the traffic. Uh, and, uh, something new. A, yeah, yeah. well, it, new. you uh, know, and it is, it, you won't get it is different. You won't get one by 45, 50 miles an hour, but Lowell had one go by 115 in a vehicle last night, so that's the only difference. Yeah. yeah. The view. Okay, so I think, is anybody else online, Ron? We good? Let's check with them. Okay. Let's <laughs> check. Anybody online have any questions? Good, I think it, are we good with Mark? Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Mark, Mark just a reminder, don't forget to call Percy first. Yeah. Get that up there. <laughs> Thank you, Sheriff. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're good. We're gonna we're gonna jump to six. Whoop. Well, and then jump push the wrong button. Um, to the town fire departments. We have we have we have fire departments here. 
Okay. Bunch of, we we got bring them in here. This is we um back months ago um when we were we were talking about the um with the fire departments and costs and and everything and it's it's really it's kind of rolls into the same thing with the sheriff that was getting with the sheriff together a a group um talking about the the financial sustainability of law enforcement and what we want it to look like and again it's just you know having having the sheriff come in and you see how that job is changing and what's happening in the demands and and a variety of issues so we had with the fire departments um and as and as when we look at budgets and you look out long range it's sort of like doing the same things with our with the town highway equipment you can out there see some gigantic bills potentially rolling in with the you know with the cost of equipment um with some communities on and off sometimes there are plenty of people sometimes there are shortages so um we had talked about doing a group to have the same kind of of conversations with the fire departments and they said they had they had already started talking so we said well how about you come back in September here it is September um with some ideas about just sort of management or saving money long term plans and that sort of stuff so welcome have you solved all the problems of the world for us no, half of them <laughs> a quarter of them <laughs> okay what if you yeah just tell us where you're at and what you've what you've come up with for ideas or well, we've met what four or five times maybe and discussed some different options and stuff we really haven't come up with anything that's firm um we've talked about you know, if, if both departments need, for example, to buy a hose, try to buy it together so we can get a better discount. Mm -hmm. um, we've looked at our joint response policies and we've made a couple modifications on that, which dispatch doesn't always follow, but uh, we can't control that. So, now that not, we haven't come, gone too far, uh, uh, too much further. Um, what you guys trying in? Uh, pretty much now on the head. There's only a certain amount of things that we can save money on if we buy it from. Um, looking over the budget, I've been over the budget numerous times, trying to figure out where we can save. You know. There's just a couple spots we might be able to save, like under hundred million dollars. Right now we're running yeah, right. a skeleton, a skeleton, but the only way we're going to be able to save is if we purchase stuff when we need it together. But in the same respect, there may be a time that Ed may need a thousand feet of hose, and our hose is doing fine. It would be a waste of money to go out and buy a thousand feet of hose to get a better price, you know. When we're our, our hose is doing okay, but there are you know there are some some equipment that we could maybe save a little bit of money on. I'm not, I don't know if we'll be able to save a ton, but a little bit, you know. And uh, we went over even our apparatus, the what we can do with the apparatus. I've been asked, can you get rid of the truck? You know, don't need four trucks. Well, each truck has its own. Specific job to do. Um, combining two of the trucks into one is going to be expensive, really. So, do we stay the course or do we spend the $650,000, $700,000 to combine two trucks into one? That's because I did some research with the truck companies and that's what would happen. You know, we, we took out Tip the Rescue. Which ran both towns one hundred seventy thousand dollars. Try to put it so it can be a pumper rescue, like our. <coughs> we took the engine two and we took the rescue and put them together. You know, it's going to be an expensive truck. Try to 
try to have you do the two jobs that you need. So, you know, it's we're, we're, it's a still a work in progress, but you know, it, it's it's going to be tough to do. If we had any fat in our budget, you know, we'd be able to wean it down some. But with everything going up, when we just got. I just got my environment up to the 2020. <laughs> and everything's still going up and we're we're on the verge right now. Dude and I are going to be sitting down with our authors and trying to hammer out the next budget. So what so what happens hammer. with you with you folks? If you look at your budgets and, and again see as we've looking with the with the highway department and you do a depending on how your equipment ages, I don't I don't I am now more familiar with road equipment. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you do a seven or an eight or a nine year budget looking forward, do you what are you going to need for replacement? And is that when you when both departments, if you look that far forward, then are there opportunities that that you can consolidate something that would work, not having to try to retrofit something. But if you look down the line, well, we're going to need a fill in the blank, and you're going to need a fill in the blank. Is there some way that, you know, and again, I don't think in, until you sort of sit down and lay out all that equipment, you know, the trucks and all those sorts of things, and to see what it is, if there's any way that that kind of combination can work. Yeah, that would be, because there would be more meetings. <laughs> well, <laughs> to see, right. I know right now we've been asked. Because we were running a 20 year schedule on our truck. Yeah, okay. Uh, we've been asked to extend it another five years, trying to get 25 years out of them. So if we do that, all our trucks in pretty good shape. Our engine two would be the next one that would be, need to be replaced, and that would be 2030. So that's a 2005. Right. So okay. that's 10 years down the road. Right. You know. Um, but, but again, see if, if you both, if, you ha if we have that kind of schedule for equipment, you right. then when you get to a something and oh look here's a couple of thousand bucks you know you just if we start now saving for 10 years out it's a lot different than trying to say it starts you know two years out trying to trying to save for the equipment but to know what it is and to see what kind of possibilities there are the, the company has that already because we provided that but yeah, the, capital, well, the capital budget that we do carry both departments that we're 50 percent right. responsible for one and 100 percent for the other so the 2025 20, year is good to look at the other thing that was talked about is what types of equipment like you said and do you have ways to make a combo truck or not or those kind of things so no, we're not talking about a lot of options like john said because yeah, we only yeah, have exactly right. and really right. a handful of trucks and a handful of dollars to run these two departments it's not like you're looking at a two million dollar operation trying to knock it down by 25 percent every percent that is looked at whether it's a capital or operating is still uh, thousands of dollars really so right. You're, right so it's not it's it's really hard to say where can you save money it's really all in the capital i don't i don't think there's anything in operating in either department to really look at it's in how do you pay for capital? How do you build the reserve? And are you turning those vehicles over at the optimal time? Repairs aren't too high, et cetera. The problem that, that all departments are having, highway and fire, is the is the increase in those trucks. trucks. They are gonna go they're they're going they're, they must be going at ten percent a year at least compared to that's what they told us when we spec it out was the that last one was to count on a ten percent on it from the price they gave. But yeah, so I mean, yeah. if you're if you're if you're trying to get the best prices for everything, I would put all the energy you could into the capital, the the apparatus, and forget about yeah. operating the you know, the annual budget. There's so much more savings and money tied up in those right, trucks. In the capital budget, right? So right. Right now, I'm operating the Northside Park Eden Fire Department Incorporated. It's a business. Because we're we're independent, and you know we're operating on a seventy. Seventy-six thousand dollar budget. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's hard to operate. No, you can't. Yeah, you, you, you can't. And, and cut anything, you know, when you're running that way. You know, what's the amount of runs we make? Fortunately, we don't have a lot of breakdown in equipment. Was that? Fortunately, we don't have a lot of breakdown. We've been extremely fortunate. Yeah, it's more sort of an upgrade.
upgrade all the equipment when the time comes. Yeah, when the time comes. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think, I don't think the comment about we've been asked to take away a truck is is exactly right. I think the discussion I remember is look at all your capital and see if you have what you need to run it, but look at it from both service agencies. Right. So you're servicing 100% of eat in and. Yeah, like you were asked by somebody, why do I have to get rid of the yeah. and we can go with that? Yeah, I just don't remember that being part of the trick. So I don't want to start something that's start something new that wasn't really started before. I think it's looking at the whole thing comprehensively. I'm just saying put more energy into that capital and try to look at your service area for the service area needs. Right. Almost not pointing fingers at that department necessarily or one piece of truck. Well, see, that's one thing back years ago, way back when 99. When I leave my private thing I'm gonna do. You know, there was a there was a question on the floor at the town meeting at that time that eat North High Park truck costs this amount. Why do we need to spend this this amount on the truck for High Park? And it, the question came to me. And I told them I said, because each fire department, the geography is different, the buildings, you know, that's gonna take care of Main Street and High Park. I don't have as big a main street. I don't have the buildings that he has. And the topography of where we go is totally different. Each department has to <coughs> take a look at what their equipment will do for the safety of the people that they're taking care of. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of our, you know, I'm not knocking to Eden by a means of road, means of the word, but Eden's roads are in great shape. But the places we have to go and where people are building houses nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. I have found doing the 911 part, I found houses to eat and I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> you know, and then, then the thought process goes, how do I cover that building? You know? Right, right. So it's. Can it's you get there? One of those situations. Right. Yeah. Okay. But there's one thing I also like to bring up because I feel that a ton of phone calls. Um, during the interview with Dave, you know, it was said at the very end, joining the two town department, the phone, my phone just started lighting up. People saying, what's this about joining the two town department? I said, town high park will have two town departments. They have one town department. We're North High Park Eating Corporate. We provide a service to Eating and High Park. And through the select board, members years ago, both agreed to pay half the budget. You know, because that did create a third. <laughs> Just to let you know. On both sides. Both, yep. both pro and cons. Yep. I probably got as many pros as you've got cons. Yep. So, but the thing is, like I say, I probably didn't own. No. But I think what's going to happen in the future, maybe not in our lifetime, right? Maybe not. Our <laughs> tenure. Tenure, thank you. Yep. Is these towns are going to start working together. More so, not very good in the apartment, I park. No. But uh, I fire not very far from Johnson. As long as you have a good pack vehicle and you need the five hundred gallons of water and stuff, because if there's any sort of a flame, it's going to meet your way in I I don't care what they say, you you're going to be calling in the next town up through there. So the the do we need not I don't know how many tankers we got in both apartments. Do we need four tankers if we can get Two more tankers coming from one way or the other way and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That I'm, not, be, I'm not saying no. that's the right scenario. Or do right. we need? Uh, we don't need a we don't need a ladder truck in every town. No. As long as we could call Marshall, they get a ladder truck. Yeah. No, that's what I'm trying to say. If, yeah. if, if they can merge some of this stuff, that would be more of a county wide. Yes. Yes. Situation. Yes, and I think yeah. maybe someday that. Well, do I think ultimately it's going? I mean, it's just going to need to out of, I think, a combination of costs. But, but again, if you look at the the difficulty for for rescue squads, for fire departments, for select boards, for school boards to get citizens that are willing to come and spend the time, and goodness knows for rescue squads and fire departments. As, as you know a lot better than I do, it's a gigantic time commitment. And when an individual makes that commitment, you're making it for your family too, because you know that's a lot of hours that people are that people are putting in. Mm -hmm. And it it seems as though it's not directed, but 
you know, it's just harder and harder to fill those positions. You know, folks aren't aren't willing to a combination. They either aren't willing to make that kind of a time commitment, um, or they're working away so that it's you know they're they're away most of the week. So it's kind of hard to make a commitment that is you might use a little bit on a weekend, maybe if that's when there happens to be a you know there happens to be a fire. So I I I mean I think that's more in the I. I I agree with Dave. I think that's coming down the road, and I don't know how to how for everybody best to be prepared for it. But I think I think really part of it really is with having a decent capital plan, so you know where you're going. Um, larger conversation, so we know what the towns around us are doing. It's um, I, you know, yeah. I agree with what you're saying, and I think these guys will know they know more than I do. Is I know a number of people that have given up being members of, of a fire company not because they want to get rid of the fire company because once you get into the fire company you, you form a brotherhood like you will anything else it's a damn mandated uh things that the state makes you do with the fire you're, up. Yeah. You're, you're gone every weekend or every other weekend away from your family just so you can cover on a volunteer fire department and, and that is it, that is all to me that's, that's what we that's what we are dealing with every year and we keep changing on it. So to find that special individual mm -hmm. that's going to put in the hours for training to start out with, you know, and just so that he's trained, he or she are trained as a firefighter, fire it, it's getting tougher and tougher, you know, because the state keeps saying you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. It's all time. And the thing is, when you're, when we go to a fire call, the firefighters get paid. The firm gets paid, like, we take it out of our budget. It's our payroll. But when they go off for a 225 hour class, they take a 45 hour class out here in Marsville. This is all volunteer. This is, you know, they're giving up their time. Right. To be on the fire department. Yeah. So, so let me, do you, do you think all that training is necessary? Well, the majority of it is because okay. any time right now that someone in need of something is going to have fire time. Yeah. We've got more runs now. I know Ed's probably in the same boat. We're running more now than we've ever run before. And it's because there's population starting to increase. Also, we got out of state coming in like crazy. Yeah. They're yeah. buying a property. Yeah. They're probably yeah. doing the same thing in my yeah. part. So, and you know, the traffic, when I was a kid, I could stand up on each corner and see four cars go by and now it's fine, and now that four cars could be the first 20 seconds. Yeah. Yep. You know, vehicle accidents, all, and anytime anyone needs help that requires more than three people, don't have fire Right. Yeah. Sorry. Rather than yep. traffic and action, or yeah. 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 Yeah, I really find it time for public. Again. And that's another class you have to take if you want to be on traffic control. You have to send their members to class for traffic control because they know how to do it. Yeah. If I take them. So these things you're saying, are they a total surprise to you or do you can you see them coming? They're not a surprise. They, this is a the fire service is an evolution. It just keeps So you can anticipate it. You can anticipate it down. Well if you can anticipate it, take and create your own future. Don't wait for it to come to you or mandate it on you. Right. Create it. That's take it and turn it into something that you can you can use in the future to benefit yourself. That's why it's that simple. What we're trying to do is be proactive versus reactive. Right. For a while right. we were reactive to everything. And it don't work, do it. You and I have had numerous conversations on different all types of subjects, and it's a situation where we're trying to be proactive versus reactive. Exactly. So that's why it becomes mandated. We're all set because we've already done it. So just what he's saying over there, you get a plan for the future and create it so it fits. You know what's coming down the pipe. You just told me that. Yep. Well, we sort of know. More and more. I know each individual thing, but I know there's going to be more stuff coming down. Exactly. And you can you can pretty much anticipate at least two three years in advance. Yep. When it becomes when it's an option, you know, for the state, when there's something that's an option, it's going to become mandatory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Let me just see. Do we have, Ron, do we have people on the 
zooming or on the phone or someplace. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm for public comment. <laughs> Anybody want to speak? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Well, yeah. we um, appreciate you take, the taking the time to look at it. About too, was me and Eddie are down at town meeting every year. Nobody ever asks us questions about our budget. Nobody comes up complaining about what it's costing them to account services. So trying, in my mind, and as a taxpayer, you're trying to cut budgets, you're trying to find places to save. Emergency services isn't really the place to pay. Well, I think, I think the problem that we are faced with is um, people don't want their roads cut either. So there we go. So, so are, and, and we don't, and we don't, and we don't deal with the schools. So things that us as taxpayers aren't wanting to cut. Well, but it, but at the same time, they say you have to lower our taxes. And that's always wow. the issue that folks find themselves in. And it's the same thing with the sheriff. They want more and more service and they aren't complaining about your service. If anything with law enforcement is they want more of it, not less of it, but they don't really want to pay any more money. Exactly. But if you, want you know, more service, you have to pay for it. Well, you don't just sit there sitting there and you're running the Northwest Park Fire Department as a business. The secret of doing business is do more than less. I don't care what business to come in to run the fire department. Or, or and and we do do more, and we're doing it at a cost that, you know, we're barely. Well, you want to do more? I went over this with Ed a couple meetings ago. I had a meeting with a representative from the insurance company. Do you know your fire department? You can tell the insurance company to stop acting up, clean up. Yeah. Right. That's what we're talking about. Right. Well, the only thing is, I don't bill for the traffic. I don't bill, I haven't built one. Okay. But yeah. I don't, I haven't felt right to bill a person from the town of Eden that's just been in an accident, their insurance company, when they're a taxpayer. You know what I'm saying? It's their money that's going into them. Well, but it's, 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 it's their insurance. Do you feel I know everybody has that insurance and stuff. Do you feel sorry if your health's burnt and they pay for cleaning up? Well, we don't have to clean up with that. No, but, but I mean, they, they have to pay for the cleanup. Yep. Insurance does. Then, 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 then what, what would be any different from the, to the floor big like? Well, I know. I had a uh, talk with the RJ West, chief of John, mm -hmm. and he told me that out of, I don't, don't quote the numbers, but I think out of the 35 or 40 car accidents he's had, one insurance company paid. And the amount of time invested, he said it was almost not worth it. I'm not giving excuses. Well, right, but just look into it. something to look into. Look into it. <laughs> yeah, and and again, that's it. You look into it, and it may well prove that the amount of time involved is not again as a business decision doesn't make any sense because you spend seventeen hours to get fifty bucks. It's like, well, that wasn't worth it, was it? I know we tried it years ago, and we never never got anything from anybody. Yeah, so yeah. It was a commercial vehicle which covered under a different type of insurance. Yeah, something big like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and again, that can be one of those things with insurance companies. In theory, they'll pay for it, and God bless you if you can get the money out of them. You know, which sounds as though it, it may be, but again, that's just the sort of, you know, you gotta you 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 need to check those things out. And if if nothing else, when you've checked those things out, then if somebody says, "Well, have you checked out?" you can go, "Yes, we have," and then people feel really good about that because you know. You're, you're not just providing an important service that people uh, that people need, but you're you're really working to take care of the taxpayers as you know as well, and and people appreciate that. Just out of curiosity, what is the percentage of 
down by the two pounds. Are we at four, five, six? And uh, uh three. Geez. yeah, it's closer to maybe three. At a hundred something out of two million. Pretty low. Not even one or two. No, what, what percentage are we? One or two percent. Uh, probably two a couple percent. Capital. Probably two or three percent. Pretty small. But part of that is a is a um, a hidden cost in there because we're not putting away enough of our uh, capitalized cost. So each year, if you want to get your capital plan the right way, your current budget should be double, really. So if you think of 100, let's say 150 right. plus 40, 60,000 a year for capital. So let's say you do 200,000 between the 200, two, you should be more like 400,000 a year. So you're, you're not seeing the true cost. You're not seeing the depreciated cost that we take off every year. And that gets lost because you're not refunding enough of that back into your budget. So, Sort of like that, uh, you know, in budgeting, if you're looking at the library department, there's a percentage of uncompensated budget money in that fall called library services. And that's your volunteer time, donations, uh, grants, all those things that could potentially dry up, which is what you're talking about with your volunteer with firefighters, and they have to be replaced with something. So if you lose your volunteers, if you're not planning for your capital replacements, those are all deferred expenses that you're not dealing with on the top of your low budget, if you want to call it that, for your operating. So it's bigger than just looking at what the operating and capital is now. It's really this long-term picture of, let's say all the volunteers get down, and you're, in five years you're operating with half the staff. Can you still operate with half of what, you're, what you have today? You might say no. You know, so what's the planning to anticipate that? On the capital side, you can, if we use 10%, it's probably a good number. We can update that and show you a 20, 30, 40 year plan. Just because you're gonna roll those trucks over at 10%, you're gonna find out you're severely underfunded right now in capital. Because when you get to that four or $500,000 truck in five years or whatever your next plan is, we're gonna take a bigger, bigger loan. What does that loan go? It gets added to your operating your debt service and whatnot. So, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare people, but when you, when you say the fire services cost less, they're not actually costing you less. It's you're showing less than it costs. So then if you add in the other 121,000, if you wanted to double it, now you're talking 4% of a $2 million budget. Chris, I'm not, I'm just, right. yeah, I'm just saying percentages are low, but you still want to get to it. Through any kind of review for the future, you want to get to those real numbers. And I think we can do that and show people um, the difference. Once we get into it, if you really want to look at it again, you have to recognize that depreciation is not being uh, right. refunded. I think we should. I think we should look at it when we review our budget every year when we sit down with the town meeting so both towns are on the same page and everybody knows what's going on. So you have to sit down and go over the budget, right? You guys know how to do it. We have a meeting with them to present it to us. Yeah. And then you know, that's our officer sit down. To me, that's a better time to do it because then everybody's on the same page. I mean, like, with the buying equipment and turn around and coming back and saying, well, did you really need it? Well, you've already bought it. But you should have this discussion when bought the last round. Now, now you're thinking we don't need it. Well, I know. You can project as much as you want on what you think all of us are saying, but I'm not saying that to you. I'm not saying okay. you did, but I'm okay. at the downside, but you said, what right. truck are you getting rid of? You know, so and and that's that's not what the board is saying. Uh, what's that? I don't know. Yeah. I would never told you. Well, that and that's what. <laughs> anyway, um, I do appreciate you looking at it. Yes, you're a small percentage of the budget, but it may be hard for you to believe, but we put everybody through this. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, it it's um and again, I think the. Trying to figure out now to figure out long term with the capital how we can and opportunities to put money in there. So it's it's uh, um, it's always nice to have some money in the savings account. And 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 again, you've got it because who knows things can happen as well, and suddenly you need it. So when you got some when you got some money put aside, then it, then we are able to address it when when it needs to be addressed and not have to not have to worry about it. I like, uh, I like the way that we use for trucking 
Split up over by both, basically. So whether it goes to it's not predetermined where the money goes; it goes to both departments. But it's not the use of it is not pre-planned. It's just the money that the bills in there is built on a looser capital plan. It's, we do have one, but it's not it needs to be updated. Um, so in the fire, this is uh, as of June thirtieth last year. The fire vehicle fund had one hundred thirteen thousand in it. The annual <laughs> and the annual equipment is only sixty-five thousand. So sixty-five thousand a year, and then you take all your six or seven trucks that come up combined is where that sixty-five probably should be the one thirty, the two hundred range, somewhere in that. And that builds enough to get to your cash replacement without a, without a loan. So that's the idea between trying to match your annual to the depreciation, so you'll have that money. You have to add the ten percent though. You can't just take the appreciation number. So. But that'd be a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even the highway capital, when you think of all the various pieces of highways, only 140. And I know that in six years, when the grader comes up, yeah. you're like $200,000 short, even at the 140 a year. Right. So those are just. Because while you guys, you guys with your equipment may be able to do 20 years and Try to stretch it to 25. We're now figuring realistically with with town equipment. If it lasts maybe eight, we're lucky. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, just give you a quick example. The equipment. This is large equipment and small equipment. So this is total depreciation in 2019 fiscal year is almost fifty thousand. That's all your air. Compressor, the SCPAs, the small trucks, the big trucks, all that stuff is depreciated in one year, fit almost 50. And you're barely putting away 20 a year between the two reserves. I mean, that's high part, you know, right. not even. Oh, we start going to budget time and life becomes depressing. <laughs> Well, I, I I I thank you all for taking well, the, I, the time to look at it. We got together and we got some signatures for you. I'll let you guys read it. We I got as long as I get to two chief here, I like to know why you guys feel that we want to. You do can't feel Belvedere when you go over to Belvedere to fight a fire. Oh, can we get to that in a second? Oh, okay, plan. can you, Roger, well, Roger, can you wait, wait? It. Can you guys yeah. wait? Can you wait just a second? We went right. around and we were talking to the taxpayers, trying to find out, and, and this is what they're saying. This is me and Eddie had a conversation. And yeah. Everybody's complaining to us, so we did go around and ask, and we gave pros and cons that you get. You guys can read through that later. But okay. This is, you can read it. What's that called for the record? Uh, um, petition to acknowledge value of services provided by Hyde Park Town Fire Department and North Hyde Park Eden Fire Departments. Everybody, everybody I, I in the town of Hyde Park probably, would sign that. We probably would have doubled that. But we were told at 19, some people didn't want to around talking to them. So I understand that. But the way that is worded, everybody in the town of Hyde Park ought to sign that because I don't think you'd find 10 people in Hyde Park yeah. not saying you're not doing a good job. No, I'll do it. She's got to read the rest of it because it's not saying that. It, it said people acknowledge what they're paying for taxes to provide the way for the services. They're not, they're not complaining about it. It's not that they're saying we're doing a good job, it's that they're actually not worried by the fact that they're spending X amount of dollars of their taxes to these to the departments of funding. Just it doesn't. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it to you, Ron. Okay. Now, sorry. Now we're going okay, to Okay, so why should my tax dollars go pay for Belvedere if Belvedere has nothing to offer for? I do get the copy of the bylaw, Robert. I didn't carry on, but Belvedere and Waterville pay part of Johnson's budget. I understand that. But if you'd have gone on standby in Johnson, I could understand you didn't have to build it. But you actually went to the fire and fought the fire with him. And 
we always in the past have built them. I proved it to John. Yeah. North Light Power Dollars has. And then all of a sudden we stayed there. We haven't built them in years. But what we also found out was the way the bylaws are written was the way the mutual aid agreement is written up is the town that they provide coverage to. So because Johnson technically provides coverage to Belvedere and Johnson the mutual aid association was talking that it didn't seem like a bill should be necessary because they are paying part of Johnson's budget. So why why does Cambridge get away then billing them? Cambridge hasn't been Cambridge doesn't them. bill them. Oh, uh, right. that wasn't what I was told. So you can check because I had we checked. had the conversation. Alan Carey, the chief of Cambridge, had said that when RJ took over chief, they formed an agreement that said, we're not going to bill you, you're not going to bill us because you come to us when we go to Fletcher. And the well, way it is, I okay. specifically okay. asked him at the last mutual aid meeting, and Cambridge does not bill us. And the way that the bylaws are written, Sure, their coverage is with Johnson. The department and their coverage area. So right. Johnson's right. coverage area is water bill and Belvedere. They pay their budget for Johnson. They're going with Johnson. We go with Johnson as we do it. The, the low bill, you guys? No. Nope. Right. Which we're actually in the process of doing right now because of this comment that's been made. I'm actually typing something up for the low department to sign and us to sign that says we're not going to bill you if you don't bill us because we're not in the same mutual aid. So in the aspect of this call that we're talking about, if we sent Johnson a bill, which we don't need to for the call in Belvedere, then I would have had to request Lowell to give me a bill for coming down and covering my fire house that day. So therefore, this hand washes this hand, which is washing that hand working together in the community. But we are in the process of writing that agreement between us and Lowell because we're not in there mutually, and we do use our health and maybe that we, we do not need to write one up for press, but if they're in the rural, rural New Delhi and the rural New Delhi and the Wall County New Delhi, I've got an agreement. So if we need anything from Crossberry, Hardwick, Woodbury, we can get it. In the same and in return they need it they need us and all of this you know it's one of those situations where it will be a wash you know? and we do we do border crab berry um how about the east hill and we have worked together before there was no bill because like i say the two mutual aids are border crab berry and garfield too yeah yeah. I mean, Piper Park has known the hardest before for structure fire because of the agreement. Uh, it, but if we ever need hardwood for a second ladder, and we say we have more spills out and so can't send them, we need a second ladder, hard to be right there. Yeah. So it's one hand walks with the other. Yeah. Again. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. They just put two guys off the punt. I just don't think it's right. Eden had to come in and pay on their share because they didn't have any coverage. They used to get paid, have to pay, but Valley and Waterville gets away with it. Fine me. Okay. But when you say you can't save, you can't save nothing. You are where you can get some extra money and be legally to get it. You don't want to get it. But it wouldn't be for when they lay over there. Where the because they were going against mutual aid. Right. Yes. Because you were building your coverage area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I can see that because you're covered by mutual aid. So you're going to come up with an They're not in mutual aid. They don't offer nothing to mutual aid. It doesn't. It's, yes, it does. Do they it. offer X amount of dollars for the Johnson yeah. budget, which goes into this mutual aid. And all the puts equipment in their station right. for the mutual aid to use it. And all the equipment in station and Johnson, we get thrown it out tonight. And they keep it. Right. You know, so, you know. so, whatever's not covered in the mutual aid, you're going to write a separate agreement for the non mutual aid towns, how they kind of work into the system. Which is low. Is just low. Just low. Yeah, right. Right. But that's right. the point. So, you've looked at the whole thing, there's low hanging out here. Everybody else is in a mutual aid, so you guys have it covered except for the wall. That's right. Other than the handshake that we have with the town of Wall, it says, Call us when you need us. Right. We'll come to you when right. you need us. We're going to put it on a piece of paper. No, but right. it, you know, that kind of discussion and questioning from Roger makes it seem like it's all out of control, but it's sort of under control with some yeah. detail. Just understand it better, I guess. Okay. All right. So, 
They'll, that'll be ran up at some point to address more. So that'll be good. Yeah, but that'll be the one that won't No, but we can ask you the questions. They just settle. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. <laughs> your entity on your own. I understand. No, no, I just I don't think you need to sign off on it. Yeah, I wasn't implying that. I would say if it's going to happen. That was my question to you: Was do you need to sign off on it, or is it like? I, 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 I thought guys, having right. a conversation was yeah. a point was to have. Okay. Have we beaten this dead horse enough or do we want to whack it a couple of more times? <laughs> oh, We're good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well thank thank you for thank you for looking. I really, really appreciate it. We just and I've got some good ideas from a couple of your members here, so I'm gonna see that one with you. Okay. Thank you, Dylan. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. See ya. Okay. Do you want to do it sustainable? You said you're going to do it at now. Maybe. Sustainable. Number five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just need to put that off till the next meeting. Okay. Oh. But that'd be the easiest next thing meeting. to do right now. Yeah. Yeah. So well, well, we. Oh, oh. <laughs> For October. Yeah. That's yeah. October. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Um, that paperwork does give me an idea, though. Me too. I think we're thinking the same route. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me see. So there's a fire department. Okay, we took care of prospect. Um, Street, we took care of that, didn't we? Yep. Yep. <laughs> People are going to keep right on speeding. Um, unclassified roads. Okay, so last, I don't know, you know when at this point, but there was a question about where we're at. Okay. Yep, yep. So the where we're at answer, which I was able to finish up today and emailed it to people with email tonight, is basically I wanted to revisit the 2015 Road Committee report. I know anybody that was around back then had a probably remembers a spreadsheet, a large piece of paper, yeah. listed all the roads, yeah. Yeah, listed all the issues, the, the cost for maintenance, the property tax generated by that road, and then some action item or to-do list that, that we're supposed to work on. So those are recommendations from the road committee. Over the last several years, some of those things have been done. Some are left to be done. There's a whole, there's one part of that big report, which was called unclassified roads. Those are Roads that, um, for whatever reason in the past, never completed the formal town highway acceptance process. So they're either, either subdivision roads that were okay. built and the town was trying the road out for a little while with anticipating accepting it into the town highway system and then never did except the plows kept running. <laughs> so you had a mix of a private road generally, you know, maybe it's a strip of land, maybe it's an easement and public maintenance. And that put it into a funny legal situation because when you're using private property on a regular basis for public highway services and and um, and maintenance, such as plowing every year, such as grading, brush hogging every year, the roadside, it becomes in this unclassified standing that needs one way or the other. Either you should be private or you should be public. And you are in between it creates insurance problems, legal problems, and a bunch of other stuff that, that the law doesn't deal with. So you'd be stuck with potentially even more costs to unravel yourself in a claim, for example. So what's left on the unclassified list, there are probably 20 other issues on this list that you'll see on your email. Uh, but there's at least three left I'm going to pull the report up. Um, three issues left. One of them being Sylvain Road, which is right across yeah. the street here, which is a, house, a, a private road, three houses. Current report, you know. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm reading from this report, which you'll see. If you want large copy printout, I can give you that. It's a one page document. Yeah, I um, uh, So Sylvain is the last one of the unclassified roads. So oops. four other roads were dealt with in the last five years. Then we have Beam Road, which is the last thousand feet is a private road. And publicly maintained, or I guess to a turnaround. That's uh, Scott Griswold Road. Yeah. And just past the Clark's house, if anybody knows the yeah. internet. Uh, LaRiche Road is another one. The first part of it is class three. It's only a couple hundred feet long, actually, but the town goes past the three, goes onto the class four section, and then goes onto a private road and turns around. Turns. At okay. the, the bottom of the hill, if you know where the yep. little bridge home and driveway yep. sort of takes a right and goes up the hill. Yep. All, most of that, probably about three quarters of that, is not on a class three road, which you normally would expect to maintain. So, Setting any personal history and all that stuff that anybody might have, and why we're there and how we got there, that's the current situation. So we probably should not ignore those and try to keep on working on them and resolve that either way. Either make them a class three to the turnaround, get enough right away to turn the truck around so you're not pulling around in people's side yards and things. So would we plow all the way to live all the place in? Just to the bottom of the driveway. To the bottom of the yeah, driveway. Yeah, but yeah. And, and we we don't go on on Scott Rizzle, right? We turn around before Scott's. No, we go on his property and then the the neighbor across the road for about a thousand feet. So private. you're you're saying bring that back? Oh, I'm, no, I'm just, we're not I'm, saying anything. We're just I'm saying that's saying what we're doing, it, right? It could go either way. You can either pull, pull it back or you can get the class three status to right. the turnaround. All of these have a turnaround. It's not like they're going off and trying to. They're not getting stuck. They built or used driveways or built a turnaround or whatever. So. So this doesn't include a list of five or six public turnaround areas, which the town has either built or used for years that go off on the people's private property by 60 feet or something. You know, there's a good one, a good example <laughs> on, um, on East Johnson Road. It's class three and it turns to class four, and we're plowing just a little bit of a class four, but the town built a large, it looks like a large turnaround. You can see on aerial photos that goes 60 or 70 feet to the north like a little L shape that sticks out. No right away. They just built it because it was needed for the truck to turn around and they didn't have anywhere else to turn around. So I'm not sure what the, what, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not going back on the history. I'm just saying what we're doing now doesn't match what we legally or technically should be doing for these turnarounds. Um, Oh, and how sorry, Heath Road is the other one. So Heath Road is almost the same thing as, um, <coughs> as Beam Road. Heath Road is a class three up to a certain point, and then you get to a big stretch where there's no houses, and then uh, Don Bullard's house at the end. So in that long stretch before you get to his house, there's most of his class four, and that also ends. And then you're still on his property before you get to the house as a private. And we go right up to his front yard and turn around in a loop driveway, very similar to Orchard Terrace. Yeah, okay. That person, any time, could say, get off my property, and we don't have a turnaround. <laughs> That's at the end of the class four. There is a bus turnaround halfway down the class four. And you can see that too, where the bus doesn't even go down to the bullets for some reason. No. But the town truck pulls around. Right. Right. There's been old gravel pit there on the time. So that's, I guess that's four of them. And they're all basically the same. The town got an agreement from a landowner to go around and turn around because it was easier, and, and the town never got the, the right to do it. And those folks can just stop it in the middle of winter if they wanted to, which almost happened up on McKinstry Hill. The, the turnaround at the top of the hill where the bus used to turn around, the neighbor there said, I don't want the bus anymore in the middle of the winter. And we had to pull off there and the bus had to change its route. So those are the kind of things that could happen when you don't have the right of way. Okay, any of those roads here, if we said, it's okay, we've been doing it, let's take it over, let's do it. We've got to make sure that that section of the road comes up in down standards, right? Whether it's class three or four. Well, we don't have to make sure, we don't have to make sure it does anything because you're already doing it. You basically took it from them without the right of way. So it's your standard. 
if they were asking you to take it over, then you would say, here's what we want. So are you looking for a... Well, we just, uh, I, think, <laughs> I think we're just needing to figure out what we need to do with these. And they're some of the most, the most <clears throat> right across the road here, is certainly the most complicated yeah. one because of the, the, the road going up to it is really in. It'd be interesting to ask Ed if he would take a fire truck up there. And my understanding is that part of, of the delay in not dealing with it is down at the bottom and, and the culverts down there that the state is supposed to be dealing with that. And that that's on no place with the state. And that the thing was when the state did that would be the time to um, salvage that their their road, their driveway, that, you know, that goes up there that is definitely, oh, slowly but surely sliding down the, you know, down the hill. Um, and I think the thing with those folks, and again, this is one of those because we've done it forever and there's the turnaround, that if we could get that fixed and done, I, I'm pretty sure we could work with those neighbors and say, okay, let's do this, this, and this, and we'll get it up to speed. And then in the future, it's yours and it becomes your responsibility to plow it and take care of it, we get out of it. But to help get to a resolution, so to, do we need to, to take prioritize care of that. them? Yeah. So what? And then Their and, summer are probably pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're all they're all sort of close. In other words, any one of those four property owners. Well, actually, sorry, three. Sylvain wants the town to make some improvements and plow it and maintain it. The other three are fine with what's going on now, but they could change their mind. So the energy, if you want to call prioritization, is Sylvain folks are saying, we've got a bad road, how come it's in such bad shape? Well, part of it's due to cost, part of it's due to it doesn't meet town standards. So do you upgrade it to a substandard but good condition and get out of there as a, as a solution? Probably that would be something that would work for people. They have a really yeah. good road. They know that in three or four years, it's going to be discontinued and we're out of there because there's no way we're giving it meet standards. But that's the middle of the ground. Why we've been there for 20 or 30 years, I don't know. Yeah. I know a little bit, but uh, the other roads, again, are, seem to be done because of the convenience of the highway. Wild Creek. All, all the other three are at the for the convenience of the highway. Wild Not, and maybe by the request of the landowner, I don't know, but at least it was something that worked best for the, the highway crew. So the main did not work for the highway crew. It still doesn't work right. for the highway crew. It didn't pass the state of Vermont's inspection. Right. That's a totally different animal. So do we meet with people over here on Sylvain Road and uh, and discuss with them uh, uh, the future? Yeah, I, th I think you, one at a time would be fine for me because we've met with, we haven't met with Bullard. We haven't met with the Rich. We have met with the Dean Road neighbors a couple times and we have met with Sylvain a couple times. So yeah. you could, you could pick your priority as well, Sylvain that, is, is probably the hardest nut to crack a little bit. Well, it is, and it's the road that's that's also in the worst shape. And I I think a couple of years ago, I had Mark do a quick look at it. And, and, and of course, it's saying you has to, you have the state come in, it's going to cost $3,875,000. Mark says, no, it's not. It's not, not. <laughs> we, could, we could come in and we could do that. And again, I think those folks would be very amenable to let's get this stabilized and doing okay with the understanding that once that's done, then then in the uh, couple, that be, it's going to be your road. It's going to be your driveway. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be yours. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Because, of course, the problem with the, right. with the state is that it's coming through. It keeps washing it away. So if you, anyway, Mark yeah, so looked picking, at it and thought he had some. Picking one would be a good right. start. And what I would do if you wanted to pick one to work on is just give you what all the information I have as an yeah. introductory thing. So everybody has the same information. And then you would be probably meet with neighbors. At some point, you're going to get to Dave's question about how much do you want to, right. what level of good do you want to get that road on? Well, that'll be the bigger question. What, right. what, what are the solutions? What are the possibilities? Yeah, it's going to be definitely two spectrum. On it, their what they envision and what their their foreseeable cost is going to be, and they wanted to, they don't want to pay you probably. To, I, mean, I know that's not it, but that's right. the spectrum that you're going to go to, and then uh, there's a realistic part of what we can afford. 
and actually do. Right, and those are a lot of details that get worked out with the meeting. Yeah. Right. Meeting of the minds on something. Resolved. So do we invite the owners on on the road to come in and meet with us? Or do we go and meet? Yeah, them? well, meet typically you would do a site visit first so everybody sees the road. So I've, yeah, a Take process would be look at it, right. I'll put them in a packet You're together, right. you know, put the packet together, you all decide when right. you want to meet with neighbors, and then okay. you decide what the next step is. Yeah. Rolling roll on, on the board, Pete, when you've done that three or four years ago? Sure. Right? Yeah. And again, isn't the state supposed to be doing something with the culvert down at the bottom? Isn't that part uh, of the hang up? There's an update on it. Oh, okay. So, cool. <laughs> with uh, over here? Yeah. yeah. So, Peter Danforth from Willow yeah. County Conservation District went right. to the state, got some money for a grant. And there was one grant program that he used to hire watershed consulting to design a, a solution, a partial solution to the stormwater. So, we haven't stormwater come off that road. Hit Johnson yeah. Street extension and create erosion down the bottom, which was washing out into that culvert of the states. Yeah. The state of Vermont said, "Oh, yeah, great. We, we're gonna we have a culvert replacement under there because we know something's wrong in there, and we're gonna we'll be redoing that all. We'll fix it at that time." State does <laughs> an inspection. I think they ran a kick camera through or something, and they found out it was one little thing that was creating a problem. They fixed it, and they're gonna leave it for another fifty years. So there, okay. yeah, that okay. option failed. If you okay. Want to call it that. Okay. Water There's no bottom in that cold. No, they they were just gonna let it sit until it's a problem. I don't know what that means, but it's, it's a problem now. No, but they don't see it as a problem. I'm just I'm just telling you. And, and their priority of all the <laughs> all the state the problems, problems they're looking at. That's not a problem. That's not gonna solve us in the near future. Anyway, right. Because mm -hmm. once they put something. it on the back burner, you, yeah. you're lucky if it comes back in ten years. You can, yeah. They probably would just soon get you know seventy five percent FEMA money to replace it is repair it now. Right. But anyway, that's another story. So the watershed consulting did spend a bunch of money trying to design the next solution, which was to take the water from that intersection and from Sylvain, put a little catch basin at the bottom of Sylvain so it didn't wash out from its control, send it to the other side of the road, which is the north east corner of the intersection of Route 15, okay. and basically put a subsurface collection thing in there so it would filter into the sand. So all that work was done. <coughs> An effort of a design. Sent to the state of Vermont for approval because part of it was in the town, the state right away, part of it was in the town right away. And the state of Vermont decided last year that they don't want to work with any municipalities for any stormwater solutions. <laughs> so they denied us the. That's a uh, surprise, isn't it, Roland? Really? <laughs> they, they, denied, they denied the 1111 permit, which is the same thing you all do for driveway. Right? And uh, we tried to appeal internally. We didn't think you can appeal to the state transportation board and go through yeah. all that. We tried to appeal internally, so we redesigned the system a little bit to try to address their concerns, and they said, no, 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 you know, thanks for doing this extra work, but your appeal period ran out from our first denial, so now you can't appeal. Let's well, right. go up and um, so anyway, we're just turn just... the roundabout for them. <laughs> that <laughs> looks nice today. Somebody got in there. You you see that? A uh, couple of days ago. A couple of days ago, yeah. 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 So one, we're one, one guy with a weed whacker, and he... <laughs> Watching traffic, so we're Closer. kind of stuck with the, with outside sources on that. Okay, as a, as a all right. Well, that's good to know. Okay, all right. So it's all on us. Okay. Okay, so that's a, that's a long story, but it's all on. No, us. no. I mean, you can go over there and you can work on that road over there for two weeks, unless something's done to that culvert. You're not gaining nothing. You're right. No, I know. Pete Couture and I went through that. Yeah, Pete, Pete and I had the time. state's been there, they looked, they're yeah, been there. There. It's, yeah, it's all it's <laughs> been there. Well, that's funny that the state man we had there didn't agree with them. <clears throat> and I'm trying to think who it was. I'd have to talk to Pete. I'd have to see Pete. Okay, see well, we'll... who it was and see you guys written down. Okay, we'll get we'll get the packet together and we'll take it from there. We'll yeah, see what we if can If you do. want that okay. to move forward, I... Yeah. Pull together yeah. whatever I have on uh, Sylvain, and you can look at it, and then decide to decide or not to decide to meet with the neighbor. Yeah. Okay. The other ones will let rest. Well, 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 with the others resting, is that the sort of thing that that we that it would make sense to go and talk to them and get some kind of written agreement so they say it's okay? Because then I can see sort of where things happen is a piece of property sells, and then 
the new owner says, oh, I don't want you there. Yeah, but now are we going to... It's good to pull out. Yeah, yeah, if you do that, are we going to be... You know, they're going to be elevated. Elevated to do a grading on those roads and do the culverts on those, those stretches. We, well, we are now. Once you get a unclassified, unclassified status, you're required to maintain that public service level. So we, we're already required to do it. But uh, on yeah. a class three road, though. Yeah, class three and class four. So class no, I'm four. On, I'm saying on the private section of it. That's another reason to clarify it because under the state rules, right, we're only required to do the MRGP on threes and fours, basically. Right. So on the threes and fours, we have certain standards to be. The state doesn't even have those private roads in their database. So they're not on our highway map. Okay, okay, right. They don't exist. But when we're doing the work and it might be a town road, and we might have taken it over by use, we're kind of stuck in between about whether we should stop at that private road class four line or make finish the project because we're there. That puts highway and planning people, and there's no grant money on private road. You know, there's all sorts of things that get involved with with, <laughs> with this gray area. So that's why I'm bringing it up as a yeah. pick one, we'll work on it, and then we'll work the others. There's there's a quick way to do it, which is really just to focus on, but it, it takes a lot of time. It, you know, these things to yeah. work at all the details and have everybody kind of understand it. But let's, I would say, let's try something. Yeah. Work through a process and do the same stuff with, again with the other and just do them one after the other and, and not let them sit forever. Like, right. That way you can stay have. focused on we're, one we're, road and yeah, so. make progress, I think. We're slowly but surely getting them picked off, right? Yes. You'll see that on the. On the PDF I sent yeah. you tonight, okay. you'll see all the notes in the right column about where things are at and what was done. Gotcha. Okay. Unbelievable, it's budget season. Our favorite time of year. They're probably doing yearly budgets as you barely, that's all you ever seem to deal with, isn't it? Over. Yeah, that's all, right. All we need to do is the, is the highway and the Library, isn't it? Everybody okay with yeah, I think we should spend more. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, so, Ron, what do we. So, each year, and I, I didn't I do it this I'm year talking. because I, I, it never quite worked right. I'd give you a whole calendar, we're going to meet with this person, and da, 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 da. But what happens generally is I'll send a after she makes me, I'll send a memo out to the department saying, welcome to the new budget year. Here's where I put you on the schedule, but let me know if it, if it doesn't work. So I'll use your next monthly meetings, or you guys decide to set up a second regular. And generally we are, we are going to be probably needing a second regular type meeting for the, yeah. for the budget season. Cause sometimes the budgets, when people come in, they take up your two hour slot and there's everything else gets pushed off. So. If you want to think about that tonight, then I can put that in a memo. You know, the second and fourth, uh, first and thirds, or first oh, and third. Yeah, you'll we'll probably have to put one for huh? E and not quite park together up there. Yeah, we should yeah. do that this fall. Yeah. yeah. So those are the first and third. We do all that stuff on the first and third. So if you're going up to Eden to talk about fire, which I think you committed to last year. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. We, you do that on a first Monday. Then you have your monthly on the third Monday. But with a schedule like that, I can set up. You know, the zero budget, justify anything over zero. That's what we've been doing in the past. Um, we don't ask departments to come in explaining every line item, just the changes. Yeah. But yeah. you can do whatever you want to want to do. Some people have been, the last bunch of years, have been good about getting really close to zero. I, I yeah. think when the way things are going right you now in this world, if, if we ask them to level we won't accept anything yeah, right. over level one. Yeah, I and mean, I think in the well, past a, you would say I, if you have something that absolutely has to be discussed, then bring that up over right. here. Don't don't make it part of your budget and have us take it out. You know, have it as a separate item over here and we'll talk about that, whether it goes in or modified, deferred, or whatever you do with your request. But I think it's it's hard for departments to not ask when they see a need being asked for from the public. But they can do pretty good at close to zero on a regular, basic, continued level of service budget. And just like Roger's talking about, 
eighty thousand for directed patrol, or the fire guys are talking about their twenty or thirty thousand, they might come back with fire capital. You're going to have requests in over here that are not zero. Yeah. Right. You right. Do you think that's fair? So we're asking the level fund. Well, I I think that does but well, but again with Roger, right when we when we talked with the sheriff, they did he he committed to three years at three percent. You know, because again, it's like his insurance is everything is going up. So it's you know, no. I again, think depending you, on what I don't is, think yeah. you can. And the day like that, maybe not zero, but you could put a limit to the three, two, two and a half percent. But it makes me mad every year. We have to cut our budget to bring the tax rate down. Mm -hmm. Any extra money we have, we take a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand out of our, our college slush fund, whatever you want, that we can't use for anything else to lower the taxes in the town and we've done that for how many years now well we we use some of it some of it I know, but yeah, yeah I, I know yeah. But i'm just saying you I take one hundred fifty thousand dollars you could do a model road to that but nobody else cuts <laughs> only well, only us you're the only one that do the cutting that's why we get our big salaries, Roger. Yeah, I'm just saying. I know, you know. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's why we yeah. get paid. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's the. I was thinking, my guns, the way things are right now, and the people are out of work and the people are struggling. How did the, uh, Ron, how did the first tax? I think this is going to go against what Dave just said. But yeah. We, we got our August 31 payments, and we are the lowest we've been. We've been, we are more current with taxes and lowest delinquents than we have been the last 10 years. Okay, yeah. but you wait to see what happens next year. No. This ain't the year it's going to show. It's going to show next year. No, we're just saying current taxes, everybody. That's because, yeah, but, but that's, that's not so in other towns. Okay. You've got to admit that's, that's right. because she set it up. You didn't pay your taxes. You had another year to pay them. That's right. And before it was just whatever you could pay. Right. And nobody <laughs> ever got caught up. Free Plus so, those that were laid off, they got six hundred dollars more, and then you know yeah, but that's but that's COVID, stop, right? But um, that that's, that that, could, that, that could be a factor. Well, that, that was the big help there, in saying that this way it's going to be. I'm going to give you a year to make those payments and catch up. And if she did, she put them in the tax sale. Yeah. And I have to give her credit; she's done a very good job. No, of right? It. No, no, she's done an excellent job. I, and and I, other towns are not right. saying that, but I, other towns are not saying the same thing because I've talked with other select boards, yeah. and they aren't. Hide, hide. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on whole, in Hyde Park. I think there was a whole new citizen on the hardware. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah. You see that? What's going to happen? Hardware. The whole thing. The facts. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Kim says it too. She thinks part of it is more and more people have It's time to be just, responsible. Well, and this they are are putting it in with their mortgage the payments. Yeah. So so they're you know, so I mean, you see, you're kicking off a little bit monthly as opposed to yeah, four times a year, here's a big bill. It's older. How come she says she's probably seventy five percent of people now that's what they do. And she sees more and more and when people have she encourages okay, no, people to do that. I and I think I, I think that's what's happening. I I don't I don't know. What I don't do. disagree that we want it. You want to keep the, you know, the budget low, but it's like I'm, you know, we're doing okay. I think Dave's. I think Dave's right. I think the departments are used to getting that message now. Yeah. And then during the meetings. Yep. These other Here's something that happens. Up, Here's what goes on. Right. And then the board says, "Where do we want to be with the tax rate?" Yeah. You'll do that in December or January. Yeah, and we figure that out. To make those harder. Um, but well, fun's tough, but you know, keep huh, it as low as we can. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's a good place to start. So you know, we're just doing our here's our usual. If if you tell them they can have three percent, then they will be here explaining why they have to have six percent. Right. right. You know, it's just. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just how we all are with money. You know, that's just the way yeah, it works. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so can can we do? So is your Brian? Is your work schedule? Have you are you back to Anything not yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> not yet? Okay. <laughs> no, I've so, got, I got, yeah, I got people knocking on my door so bad right now with fall you know, coming and stuff. But yeah, they, you know that ain't going to go, that program. Oh, the work crew? Oh, yeah. yeah the, work, work, the work crew is uh, it's probably pretty much done because it's, uh, but yeah, the only thing that can change it, just like anything else, is the people speak up oh, and yeah. demand it. Yeah. But so are your days off still Monday and Tuesday? Yes. You're still Monday and Tuesday. So yes. could you do... We do third. Could people do first and Mondays as well? 
to roll through this and we could probably get some other stuff done as well, but yeah, get the budgets done and good. that sort of stuff. You disappear in hunting season? I'm, I'm hunting season. I'm like, you want to be up on a tree with me after I'm going to be. <laughs> Six o'clock at night, I ain't going to be in your tree with you. <laughs> they call that jacket. I'm going to be in the tree with you at noon. <laughs> So now, be you, are you gonna you usually go over to Maine, right? What's that? Don't you usually go over to Maine? Yeah, too? Yeah. You're gonna go over? Yeah. Okay. They have deer over there. <laughs> be, a beer, or deer? <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, you come back. So we'll go, yeah, yeah. we'll go for the. Well, it depends on where you go, right? For the. So we'll go for the firsts and thirds for October and November and. We'll see about December. Yeah, yeah. At least I but at least for, for, for two months. In two weeks. I don't know. So, yeah. so we're going to do the 5th and the 19th? Yes. That will okay. That's October. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Probably. What time? What time? Same time? Six o'clock? So this is going to be for uh, the ambulance and all. Oh, yeah, the departments will come in on the first. Oh, but I thought we were going to do. We usually do a notified fire heating up there. Oh, you have to pick one. I haven't talked to them. You want to do the first Monday in November is the fire department one? Or yeah, why don't we do that? We'll go up to North Hyde Park. First Monday in November. In November, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the one you'll be hunting. <laughs> 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 when is that date, first November? Oh. It will be the uh, second. Second? Yeah. yeah. First Saturday is the seventh, Dave. Oh, you'll yeah. be here. You'll be here on second. November? Yeah. Second. No five. What time is this clock? Okay. Yeah. Six. <coughs> um. Six o'clock. And we're going to meet up this up to the North Bay Park. That in November. No, yeah. In November. Yeah, it'll be in November. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This is one by five minutes. Well, it did. Okay. So, so looking at looking at time and looking at what we have to do, let's get. Are there a few things that surely know we'll have a little more time? Meeting the first of October. Can we take care of Mr. Bartlett? Looking at sort of the action items that we need to do that just take a couple of minutes. The agenda has the motion. Uh, yep, you'll see the it's uh, to authorize the conveyance of the land at 5659 Vermont Route 100 to Michael Bartlett by quick claim deed in the mobile home to, to, to Michael Bartlett and Stephanie Adams by mobile home bill of sale in exchange for his payment of $5,067.61 in back taxes, fees, and other town expenses incurred with respect to, to the property and to authorize the select board chair to sign the quick claim deed, mobile home bill of sale, and any other related closing documents. So moved. Okay. okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. By golly. Um let's see, the planning commission. We need the resign we need to accept the resignation of Zach Coda. Ron, is there anything we need to know about that? He just hasn't been coming to meetings and isn't he? Got, uh, the priorities with his job. He couldn't make his schedule work. Yeah. Well, Next we'll one. see. Just his Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Then we need to appoint Meg Taylor to the town energy committee. Who? Meg. Ron, Meg, Meg Taylor. Okay. Meg Taylor's uh, new, to, new to Hyde Park, but she's been participating with the Town Energy Committee, which is uh, Elisa, Denise Green, and Christine Hawkwist. So they're trying to get to five people, and Meg was just looking to get into some town government position, so she thought energy was of interest to her. So she's, she's in Hyde Park. Yeah, 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 she, yeah. Just, she just committed to that today, because I was 
seeing that she was participating, but she confirmed that she would like to be appointed. So okay. moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Town orders. And I have one late minute thing that oh, uh, I got late from minute. the Planning Commission tonight. They met earlier today. Okay, yep. On uh, Municipal Planning Grant 21. So I'll commit it on that when you're ready. Um, okay, why don't you do that now? The annual Municipal Planning Grant. Um, we had a call last week, late last week, that a consortium grant between the town of Cambridge and the town of Elmore fell apart. Uh, Seth Jensen from Regional Planning was trying to help those two towns get together on a public land access management study to try to figure out how to get public more engaged with two parcels in Cambridge. Apparently, they have a um, primitive forest in Cambridge that was a part of their land holdings. So they have two properties. One of them's that, one of them I can't remember the name of, but it's a preserved type property where public goes to it now, but there's problems with it, whether it's signage or parking or access, neighboring, I don't know where all the issues are, but usually when you have a public access management plan, you're talking about how to make it work better for everybody, including neighbors or towns or wherever it's located. Elmore, when they backed out, puts a grant match condition back on. So, the only way you can get out of the state grant match is to have two or more towns going together with similar projects. And they don't really they don't have to be identical, but this one came in and Seth called me up and said, uh, do you guys have any open space or land planning issues in Hyde Park? Because even though the grants do September 30th, which is why we're kind of bringing this on quick, uh, they need that other town. And I said, actually, we do actually, we, we just had couple of discussions this year about Green River Reservoir State Park and their overflow issue because they're increasing usage over there. More traffic, more road degradation, more parking, blocking the road, all sorts of stuff yeah. happened this year. And Susan Bolmer, who's the parks manager for Northern Vermont said, oh yeah, we'll be meeting on that over the winter, but not engaging the town directly, just that we will be meeting. So I told Seth that part of our needs, just because Dave, 2015, and I were talking about the impact of re on the road right, right. and how yep. the maintenance costs and the state doesn't give us any money, blah, blah, blah. So there actually is a, a, a legislative report on this whole impact of the state park on how and how you want it. And even though the numbers are messed up and they didn't correct it, it does give a good basis for looking at that road again, considering that they have significantly well, increased well, the usage yeah. <laughs> in the time yeah. since that report. Uh, so that's one, there's a two-part piece to this potential grant. So the Planning Commission talked about that tonight. Eric Williams in particular was like, he's on the Planning Commission, he's like, well, is there an inequity between what the park is doing to the Hyde Park and their increased use and our increased cost to service a regional facility like the State Park, including the only other big use at the end is a utility. We have two people at the end of the Menashe bridge camp that he has and a house across the road. Once you pass that, it's all utility and state park. Land. That's right. Yeah. So there's a little bit of inequity there that we, highway guys feel, the select board has felt for years. I think they, at least once or twice a year, Dave in particular, since I've worked here, has raised this as an issue that, and the state basically blew it off mm -hmm. when they finally got to a formal report. The report was mm -hmm. wrong, but I couldn't get the Montpelier administrators to fix it. So anyway, that's we can revisit that. That's an opportunity. It. Yeah. 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 So that's one yeah. issue. The second issue is that uh, Act One Act One Seventy One was passed a couple of years ago, which forces towns now to include a forest block protection language in their town plan to get state approval. So if state approval, your town plan is required for your zoning bylaw. So we're kind of tied into looking at this Act One Seventy One, which we haven't done yet. We were actually ahead of it because in 2015 we adopted forest block protection into the zoning bylaw. So we already have one of the tools that the new law actually requires. So we were ahead of it because we saw, like Brian was saying, we saw the writing on the wall and the yeah. town jumped on it and basically got that out of the way and came up with something that worked for everybody and we weren't forced to quickly respond to it. But do we we do need to look at that again? So the Act 171, looking at the new statutory language to update our town plan and zoning is part A, which should be a pretty quick review by Seth. He, that's what he does every day practically for towns. 
you give us a recommendation of what to do, which the planning commission could set aside, act on, or whatever. So it's not, they're not going to do anything to force the town to do anything, but they will give us the recommendations on how to come more in compliance with 171. And then this updated study about the impacts on the state park, which is a public access land plan of sorts, whether the right. top, maybe the state wants to use the right side of Green River as a road as parking. The, you have driving up in Maine this year, almost every state park that has a beach at the end, they've worked with the towns to deal with the traffic. Because a lot of those, if you're familiar with the Maine beach, you go down the long peninsula and it's a one way in, one way out, and they have to deal with thousands of cars bouncing yeah. off a closed gate all day long. So, well, Green River, same way. Yeah, so what do you do when there's no parking? Do, right. Is the park you know, going to pay for a sheriff at Garfield Road? Well, let, let me ask you. What would the state do to us if we didn't comply to our permit? Their permit says they're parking and finds them inside them two parking areas. And and then we're going to send them home. I'm just all that stuff we can be put in writing, looked yeah. at, and debated. But yeah, that's another example. But that that's the purpose of joining this so that we can have that conversation. I think so. It, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, all, it's all like kind of flirting around on the edges, but nobody's really, you know, and, and Susan will probably do a good job for the state. She'll look at all the issues, talk yeah. all, it's going to be a state yeah, perspective, not a right. necessarily a town perspective like this report. Would be. No, no, I'm not saying you send the people home because that's their recreation. I'm just saying they all do their stuff. All right, so planning commission is recommending that the select board pursue this MPG. 21, even though it's sort of rushed, which we don't enjoy doing, but the grant application is due on the 30th, which is coming right up, and nobody's meeting between now and then. It just happened then. Right. It was well, I think I think it's a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity <coughs> to get some some updated information on the on the usage and the road, and see about coming up with here's what we asked the state for, and then we've got the the data to say here's what we need from you. So the um, so the motion is that we authorize Susan to sign because there's a resolution to sign and uh, Bob Malvon has his authorization yeah, to sign okay. the resolution to sign the resolution to submit um, MPG 21 with the town of Cambridge as a consortium grant with no local match and regional planning doing all the work. <laughs> work. So move. We don't have to be fiscal agent. Cambridge is going to be fiscal agent, so we're totally clear out of it, other than a few public meetings. So yeah. So okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, we did make, okay, town orders. Okay. There you go. One there you go. You know, are you getting copies of the budget at all? Can you send those out? I'm not sending them out, but I, Allison and I are coming up with. Send your son that way. Um, and two options for you. I think we're going to get a digital option where you get a link and you go to that uh, budget actual report for the yeah. every month, and then paperwork paper option if you want it. But um, I think paper on that is probably good. It's a, that report is about 30 pages long. Mm. Sometimes you just want it laying around rather than have to log on and find it. Yeah. So I'll try to make sure she's getting out those regularly. My idea was that she would be posting reports that you want to see on a very regular basis on a digital basis. The paper one would still be like a monthly report that she'd actually produce and hand out at these meetings. Is that is that something? I, I, I haven't figured out what reports you want to see online in one spot. So well, I'd like to see where they are on their website. <coughs> so, uh, each one of them, yeah. You know, you know, where they are on the labor, where they are on their fuel, where they yeah. are. And then I, I eventually the finance director is going to be eventually the finance director is supposed to be putting together more uh, analytical reports for you. You know, almost. Let's, let's call it a three-year average report. Yeah. How are we doing this? Because a lot of those things are so spiky. Yeah. You're not going to tell from one report for the last six months. I thought I wasn't getting them because I questioned them. Yeah. <laughs> Silly man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we're not. We're not for it. That wasn't. But <laughs> <laughs> that's Brian's bedtime. <laughs>
Nobody thought I'd read them. So I'll, I'll pick that page for you. And Brian. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we left those culverts set for you. They sink any more than they have in the last month. Or the last week, next month. Yeah. Get to go home and jump in that fire. You want that strong budget. These are pranks getting smaller and smaller. I couldn't. <laughs> Roger, I was thinking it was me. I'm going like, no. Oh, I can't. I just said it. Do you call me? Uh, so I'm going to say they will drop. Not that much of food. But I see Percy's uh, guy up there. And, and we put it jump into the. In the whether it's good or not, I don't know, but, but every point he's in because we had one in the dinner we were contacted and they said it was just people. And, and then they do say it. I won't say they won't, but not that much. They you said went down. Go slower, Dave. Or faster. Jump in. They were just put in. <laughs> well, we're doing this. You got anything to add, Chris? Sounds like I've been table for my thoughts, so. <laughs> yeah, let me, here's, and I don't mind having a conversation with Chris here. With this, uh, the sustainability um, group for law enforcement. Um, Johnson had an issue with someone that they appointed. Johnson's having a lot of issues right now. Um, with... Uh, um, they felt that they were they were uh, too close to the sheriff, yeah. and so that it was and and again, um, so in this situation we talked about it when Chris wanted to be on, saying that it, he's been deputy and our feeling and I have explained this to the other towns and Roger and I have talked about it now twice because this this is about. Again, Johnson, Johnson is off into uh, policies of policing and Black Lives Matter and, and everything else. This, this group is about coming up with the long-term view and the sustainability of financing and, and how we do it and what, we're, and what we're looking for. We all felt that it made a lot of sense to have someone who could because there can be a lot of questions that will come up and we're intentionally trying to keep select board <clears throat> members off it except for the first meeting to sort of get everybody pointed in the right direction yeah um that it would make a lot of sense and um roger's concern is 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 that um so if we come up and we decide that the sheriff's department is still the best bet that, that he doesn't want people to be going well because there was someone from the sheriff's department that was on it and that's why they reached that conclusion. I've said, well, first of all, this group is just to look at a variety of options and come back and give recommendations to the select boards and the select boards are the ones who are gonna make any decisions or any changes. This group doesn't have any authority to, you know, to, yeah, to do anything, it's just doing it. So, so, um, my sentiment that I've told Roger is that he's being over sensitive about it because he's not concerned about what the what the group comes up with or or what we you know come up with. Um, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable and just didn't get around to calling you. I'm perfectly comfortable with us sticking with saying no. We want we want Chris and Peter Gallo from the uh, from the village is the other person who has volunteered to do it. Which I think it'd be great to have someone from the village there and yeah. we're feeling that oh I'm here oh, I can't I can't talk and do this at the same time, Roger. <laughs> um, so so I I guess it's. Uh,
Um, and that's why I said you so that you know how Roger feels about it. Roger's still thinking about it. I told him, you know, we don't have to. We can do whatever we want to do. Um, uh, Peter and and Chris were the folks that really were, were very interested in doing it. Instead up to the plate. I'm perfectly comfortable sticking to it. I explained and they said, oh, that makes sense to us. They're okay with it. So. You concur? It, no. it, I'm, I'm curious. Um, is, is there a thought that I'm a former deputy sheriff or a uh, police officer of some sort? Because I know there is a Chris Jones who lives here in town that either is or, or, or is was. Now. Right. 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 That's, that's probably. I, yeah, that's uh, right. That's, <laughs> You've got right. that look. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait a minute. I got those right. So, so I think I think you're right. That's probably is the, you know, is the confusion. So. Could very well um, be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. That's, <clears> it. <throat> that's it. We're we're happy with it. Maybe we just need to do a little disclaimer on you. That's probably what we need to do. Is this? No, I'm not that. I'm. That's not me. <laughs> you know, well, it's, yeah, I've seen my name on uh, a certain offender list. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say speeding uh, tickets. Yeah, it, it's. Something, but, uh, no, no. Well, well, we'll 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 put in a little disclaimer to you know to uh, to folks. To let me see. Let me see. Verify. Okay. Um. Now, having had that conversation, we got everybody left. You want to go on the fire department? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think, but I think we got a tree warden out of Prospect Street, which yes, is great. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hoping, so you know, you never know. You yeah. talk what you can get people to, yeah. you know, to do. Giselle, right? Giselle. Yeah. Minor. Yep. Um. Okay. Let me let me get She'd through getting awesome. these all signed. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like she would be terrific. Yeah. For tree. <laughs> cool. That was bad. That was bad. So, but now you you get to see what exciting stuff we do too, right? Oh, I care about it. Yep. I've I seen that. I've seen two. You know, lots of times there's two cops yeah. down in Johnson doing the day. They have, you know, they've had a whole series of. They've got some problems down there, I think. Well, right, and they've had, they were going through a series in the evenings of cars That's being torched. That's not state police that patrols down there sometimes. No, too. no. Johnson. They had that. They went through four or five cars were torched in the evenings. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're having they're having some interesting problems. Okay, let me get these approved. They have some the stole too. I didn't hear about the stolen ones. Seems so. I did something about the dumpster. Yeah, yeah, they let a dumpster down behind. Yeah. I don't know where it was. And then there was something else. The same I time. mean, new trade, you need that. I do. Wasn't there two of them? Uh, boy, I want to say right there in the. Was in there where skinny pancake was or somewhere? Is it on Main Street, too? I oh, know, up on the no, no, left. Yeah. Lower Mountain Road. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, dumpster. Oh. Okay. So we got that. Yeah. Those all done. Okay. Need a Make motion. Motion to, to sub town orders. So, so. Okay. <laughs> all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Then we'll roll back up to having had the conversation with the law enforcement study group. And appoint Chris and uh, Peter Gallo representing Hyde Park. So, so move. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Aye. aye. Oh, because of the oh, oh, yeah, that's right. He works for the sheriff. Right. <laughs> yeah. This, this is our insider. And there's only one of him. Yeah. Thank you. And, we, and we don't listen to them anyway, right? So what the heck you're gonna do? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, the, the, that's right. The other Chris Jones, right? And he's my neighbor. Yeah, I can vouch for. 
Oh, hard work. Oh, we well, can off that. Right, maybe. Oh, okay. That's right. Oh. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. We should review the minutes. No, I don't know. They want to study. They want to study the budget. See if we can. Oh yeah. Well, an option. So, do we want to go to the state police? Do we want to, you know, just skip ten? I skip skip ten. Oh, the hazard mitigation plan action items. Okay, really this one you want me to go to really tomorrow something? night? No. Really What's the Thursday night? Okay. Uh, one of the many documents that gets us the higher level for FEMA reimbursements is the hazard mitigation document. So the hazard mitigation sets out a five-year plan for the town to take certain actions to mitigate or plan or be proactive against future disasters. So part of that list includes eight items, which is posted out of the town homepage along with the draft of the 2020 to 2025 plan. So in the plan itself, a bunch of required language from FEMA, relatively short. FEMA is actually getting much improved with trying to consolidate things and be concise so that some of the documents that used to be very unwieldy in the past are actually becoming more user friendly and just as valid. So it's kind of a good trick for the federal government. But if you go to the homepage and look at the draft plan, that plan will expire in November. Um, usually if FEMA receives it for review, which actually the state of Vermont is the one that will review it because they received authorization from FEMA to be the person to review. Last time I had to go to Washington and sit down there for like six months. Now it's going to go to. Well, I'll be here and sit for six months. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay. I heard the turnaround's four to six weeks. So four better. to six weeks. Oh, good. Okay. The most so, um, <clears throat> What I want to very briefly list for you are the action plans. So, what happened? The planning commission met with regional planning. They came up with a plan. They looked at the old ones. There's another action list that some were done, some weren't done from five years ago. Brought some forward, added a couple more. So, there's uh, eight items that are listed. Some are in motion already, so you'll know them. Number one is to complete the net zero project on Main Street. That's a stormwater design project. Number two, that's supposed to be done next year, is the sinkhole project, which again is stormwater mitigation. That's supposed to be completed next year, hopefully, right away is pending at this point. Number three is the community rating system uh, study, which is the consortium grant we have with Stowe and uh, Volca being managed by regional planning. And that's how to uh, basically adjust your regulations and give people some potentially reduced premium for flood insurance. I think there's only 12 or 13 policies in Hyde Park, but other places have a lot more, but still it would reduce potentially those premiums by uh, five to 20% or something. If, if the town does what it's supposed to do with policies and programs. Very similar to the ERAP money where you get your extra 17 Point five if you do certain things. I'm one of those policies. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one is to evaluate the Beaver Lake culvert. So this is one, if you go past Green River Reservoir yeah. oh, yeah. Road, you sink around mm -hmm. and then you kind of drop in and you pop mm -hmm. back up to Judkins a little. Mm -hmm. yeah. That low spot is a mm -hmm. large culvert. It's undersized. It's been evaluated. Um, Anyway, that's a whole other project. That's supposed to be uh, complete in 2023. Now, can you say that's undersized? <coughs> you can never wash that when all those beaver farms let go and they took out yeah. Beaver Lake. <laughs> so I was going to say, did it? I was, it didn't, it wash, didn't out. wash out then, did it? No. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if the conditions were there. They just sized it based on the watershed and the width of the river. It's a misaligned, too. It's not aligned for proper flow. So, more than likely, if, the, if that dam washed, like you did, it probably went up and over or around. Never, never, never crossed the road. No. Went right down, straight through, right, right into the Green River Brook. Yep. Come shooting down through, cross the road with Joe Bettis's. It may be, I'm just saying what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, really un, it's undersized. Right? I don't know the conditions of that were or anything like that. But anyway, I know, I know we did it. <laughs> no, yeah. I know <laughs> <laughs> So that's you're just testing. We don't re testing. Hyde Park's actually in really good shape. We've, we've tried to look at projects for major bridge or culvert work, and it's a 
three or four of them long. You know, it's really short list of major. If you go to other towns and they have unlimited projects they're never going to get to. We actually, if we can hit these three or four bridge and culvert projects, including Wickham Island Bridge. No, I was going to say about that bridge. About there's, there's probably the next slide will take that one. It's just, it's really, I just want to, you know, it's a, we're in good condition because we don't, we don't have a lot of that built up must do projects for that are very possible. We have things that are more proactive at this point, which is a really yeah. good place to be. <clears throat> um, the second bridge is the, the Garfield culvert, which is also undersized, and that's the one on the Green River. That takes the flow from the reservoir. Oh, okay. so that one has an existing okay. had an existing erosion problem, and the town put a whole bunch of money about ten years ago into the outlet area to stabilize the road. That one is still undersized. Uh, undersized. The state reviewed it and recommends a bridge there as the best fit, which is the old the old design was a covered bridge. There used to be a covered bridge there. That's right, and, and it's slid, but but there. The state is talking with the uh, the reservoir is, is not drawing any water down. Exactly. So it's not drawing water, it hasn't been oversized or undersized. Well, I tell you, so the new permit from the state of Vermont for Morrisville Water and Light mm -hmm. is called Run a River. So in the past, what Morrisville Water and Light would do is they draw that down for the winter, yeah, and get ready for the spring flood. Mm -hmm. They can under the new permit, they can only drop it six inches, right? So all of that spring runoff goes right over with the you know, run of river to that culvert, uncontrolled. So protective measure is gone by the new permit. So this severely undersized in this point. State of Vermont can care less. They don't, they, they don't look at the secondary problem. We had, the, we had mm -hmm. that problem on Route 15 by the church when they did that Route 15 culvert a couple years ago. They updated, they hugely upsized that culvert to a small bridge, basically. Did not care that we had two culverts 500 feet down that were right. right over here. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, the, the, they just don't look at those seconds. So, they put it back yeah. onto the town, basically. So, I just wanted this, this is another outcome nice. of the ANR process of looking at animals and amphibians and all those other things. And it's going to come back and, you know, against the high park taxpayers potentially. So this is another proactive one. We know it's undersized. We know there's a new permit that could affect its capacity. Let's look at it and see what needs to happen. And that wasn't put in that many years ago. No, no, we still have like relatively current pictures of the old bridge. It was 20, maybe 20 years ago now. Yeah, it really isn't that old. Uh, then two left, uh, generator backup battery for the town offices and highway garage. Uh, COVID-19 report, so when this the emergency is over, I think Carol Fano has agreed to kind of do a, a retro look at all the things that went good and bad during this thing so we can have a written document for the next pandemic problem. Uh, oh, sorry, we added one, which is the continued work on broadband. So that's another action item that uh, the broadband issue is just something that people are doing as a way to improve all the emergency response. So whether it's doctor visits online, all the kind of things that you do in an emergency, not everybody can be served with the current system we have. So again, all those are on the homepage, public comments open, final draft will be in about a month. What I need from the select board tonight, because I think, well, now that you have a meeting in October, I don't want to start using your extra meetings either. But I know. We're going to move some step The planning commission could be authorized to finalize this list with whatever public comment you want to send to them and get it to the state to start their review. So if you can authorize Bob yep. and Albon to yep. review and approve the final draft and get it to the state, then the board doesn't have to see it again until we get the comments back from the state <laughs> rather than wait for your October 19th meeting. Okay. That's that's the only motion is to clarify that. Works he's, for me. So move. He's authorized to do that. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. <laughs> now we can do review the minutes, right? Yes. Okay. For eight seventeen, eight twenty seven, and nine fourteen. You win the you win the meeting when the gavel drops, right? Nothing we can go 
I'm really kind of out when I'm not here. I'm not going to Don't worry about it. Huh? Oh, you can put him in this minute if you want. Yeah, yeah put him in this something. He was trying to catch you when his knees blew out. I know, that's what I heard. Well, <laughs> I called him apologize. Have you uh, have you filed a claim on his auto insurance? No. Should. <laughs> well, I just told him he shouldn't chase cars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize he did it. Watch him. Well, yeah, that's right. David helped me put, David Lando got my wife. Louis McCauley helped me in the car and stuff, so. Just like Brent Lanfrey said, one hand washes the other. There you go. And then he calls the wrong woman. I know. <laughs> he calls the wrong woman. Hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> that's 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 how good sign you could tell he was hurting. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Do we need? I don't think we need. Do I need? Do we need to go into executive session for anything? I don't think we have anything we need, right? Now, do you know about what's going on with the union? No, we're just waiting to get get the names. That's all. With the motion on the minutes. Oh yeah, the motion on the minutes. That's yet. right. We didn't. You're right. We're okay with the minutes. Accept the minutes of um, eight seventeen, eight twenty seven, and nine nine fourteen. Yeah. Two thousand twenty. Okay. And we don't have to go into. The meeting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. <clears throat> now, yes, sir. What? With, with that union uh, mediation, not ever been in the union before. I see the union guy suggest we use this person. Right. And Should we be looking at our person too? That. That's what we're waiting for. We got in touch with our with. Uh, yeah, we just we, yeah. we, we put, yeah with Karen. We were going to look at with Karen. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And they were just suggesting because that was that's an access of free. So we were asking Karen. <clears throat> I know she was tied up last week with something, and um, if she knows, because maybe the person is perfectly neutral and sort of yeah. you know you're fine. It's fifty fifty, and if that's good and it doesn't cost anybody anything, terrific. Yeah. But if he comes down. 90% of the time on the union side, I say, well, maybe we could see if we could find somebody that's a little more neutral. <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. So that's, we're just, we're just waiting to, to get that back from Karen. Um, I think that's okay. Anything else? But, uh, so I think if you're happy to be gone, it's time to do the, the, the first mitigation comes up, but you're still with us on following this thing all the way through. You're out hunting and we're having a meeting. Oh, yeah. We'll have to reach you by phone, right? Then, right. You, have you, you have a phone, right? You follow me? He just wants to make you, sure. You get a glazed you... overlook now. Yeah. We want to make sure that you know about it. Yeah. You know, the next step. Because we had agreed that we had agreed we we're going to go all the way with this thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but we'll, but we'll have to get in touch with you yeah. if we have a meeting on it. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Kim just asked if you're going to talk about delinquent tax attorney. We were talking about whether to change or not change and all that stuff a while back. So I don't know if we want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're all glazed. We're all glazed over. <laughs> I think the uh, the current delinquent tax attorney offered to provide yeah. the write up the deeds that we need for the closing. So right. Right. I'm Michael Barrett. Bartlett. 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 I can never get that. What are we? You do remember. Yeah, that's right. I can remember that one. What wasn't in the motion was who's going to write up the those documents. So I think we'll take advantage of her offer. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll talk right. about Yeah, and change. we'll do the okay. next meeting. I'll take the things okay. we've missed here. We'll and roll to the first. Okay. okay. So now we can adjourn. Well, I wanted to ask uh, Ron about uh, the. Uh, job position that we talked about the uh clear clarity on it yeah and as far as uh now you're saying road foreman right you're well we we that needs no, no that's that's a whole well i'm trying to figure out what uh, what ron uh, was saying his role was versus what uh he's he's done a whole bunch of stuff and we need to have a big conversation about that which i don't think people are for having right now so i'd suggest that we move that because the information is in this 
Uh, it's in all this stuff these, right these here. pages of information yeah, I mean, I that have been sent. Right that's here. right. That's right. So you got right here. Yeah, I, know, I know it. So we need to have a comprehensive kind because that's the the matrix that he's working out about the jobs that go to different things. Okay. Which is oh, about fifteen here. twenty pages. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So I think we should take that as to be the first major thing that we talk about on the first and then they get a couple of small budgets out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Depending on where you go. Right. Yeah. So yeah. everybody then will have that and have all that information in the matrix that Ron has worked out is here's where the jobs are. Again, just as we started upstairs. We get started so upstairs. is what you've got there just the titles? What would your title be? No, 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 yeah. no, so that's no, a, that's no, a it's, it's all the job titles and what they do. Okay, yeah. but it's on one page so you can look at it easy. Right. Yeah. But it's better to look at that on a screen. It's, you try to look at it on a phone or a paper, it's almost yes. it's better on yeah. a computer screen. Or an iPad even. Yeah, or an iPad even. Yeah, yeah. No, you'll like it. You can, and then you can, and it's bigger and I can see it. You got one. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, look at that. I can read it. Oh, it gets all right. It was a big improvement. <laughs> it's such an improvement, I forgot to bring my phone. Um, but that's, I think, every everybody will have this when we look at this and so there. on the yeah. first meeting in October. And let's like said, start moving small. that one. Okay. When you get your iPad, yeah. when you get your iPad, all right. Well, we can't. It's not a simple discussion. I mean, it's a it's an hour, an hour and a half discussion. Right. So I don't know that we want to. Well, we do a special meeting. We're gonna have to ask for a raise this year. Yeah, we're gonna definitely have to ask for a raise this year. I don't know if this is gonna, can be of any assistance. I'll give it to Ron down there. But uh, uh, back in uh, August 11, 2016, the board voted to. Uh, him as a road commissioner title, and uh, we can pass that down to him if you want. Got that. He's you got, got that, okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. yeah. So, Brian, yeah. the only effect that had was put what is a road commissioner back to the board, and you never, as a board, have gotten to that point. So, the matrix right. helps you answer that question. So, review right. the matrix, look at what you want, who you want it to do, move some things around if you want to play with it. Yeah, and you have all the jobs up top, but you can move the jobs around if you want, right. But the road commission does not have a job description. It is what the board says it is. It is what the board says it is. Yeah. And we never said. You'll, you'll get it after you look at the major. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I know exactly what that will say on there. I anticipate what it says and uh, and that sort of thing. But I can't believe that there was a job, descri uh, job description given to somebody without some sort of... Uh, idea of what that person's duties were going to be. That's exactly what happened. Right. Boy, it's always amazing. <laughs> Life is funny that way sometimes, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> well, and part of the problem, part, well, part of the problem is the road commission is a statutory process, which is totally different than an employee. So under state law, a road commissioner title is a basically an appointed local official that has the same statutory duties as a select board. But the select board determines which job duties they're assigned to the select board. They're giving up on and giving to the road commissioner. But they told me up no more. You just keep adding on. You could add zero. You you act, you are technically right now if you want to look at it. Brian Shackett is the road commissioner. If you look at that job duty list, mm -hmm. because the board has said we're going to do a liaison yeah. and here's what yeah. you're going to do. Yeah. Otherwise, if you didn't have your liaison, the road foreman would be doing some things. The town administrator would be doing something. But here you have this other position, and, and the state law allows one or two members of the select board to be pro road commissioner. You could do right. that and just call it liaison is now commissioner and just change the title. But under the liaison, there is a list of duties that the liaison is supposed to do, assigned by the select board. See, that's so kind of a. But if we want to get rid of Brian Shackett as road commissioner, you have to have a public hearing. So assigning yeah. that to somebody. Is it comes with some benefits? You can't just be fired for no reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get to quit either, right? Anyway, we can yes, go. We can go for three hours if you want. Right. On this, but. right, right. So we'll put that at the in something minor with budgets and start getting things going. Meeting in a minute. Yeah. That's okay. The goal. Okay.
Now are we ready to adjourn? So yes. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Phew.